quality. Let's welcome you in to the Drive Guys. <laughs> Feeding your passion for local sports in the oh afternoon. It's the Drive Guys with Kevin Gleason and Kyle Drake on your radio at 11.40 a.m. Streaming audio at SacktownSports.com and the Sacktown Sports app. You can also watch the show on YouTube at Sacktown Sports 11.40. Here are the Drive Guys with Kevin Gleason and Kyle Drake. You know, Drake, I was ready to come a little hot, as you would say. Coming to you from the I feel like it's time to Beautiful day out, you know, yeah. I was yeah. rushing through yeah. traffic yeah. and everything, yeah. honking my horn, and then you hear Simone's soothing yeah. voice. It's like, okay. 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 like I'm, I'm on a therapy session or something. Got my feet on the couch and everything. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Appreciate that, yeah. Simone. Yeah. Of course. You, Lucky for everyone in Sacramento. Oh, we'll you still doing it. Oh, my God. All weekend long. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Here's what I was going to say. I'm hearing a lot of understanding, and the drum beat gets louder and louder and louder. The anti Harrison Barnes drum beat. And I think for the most part, obviously, it's fair. I think for the most part, it's inbound. Some people get a little bit of a private entry. No, listen, no, like guys, guys talking to people, people coming out for HP. But, but there's, there's one, one thing, thing that I think, think needs to be said here. Here. And maybe, maybe you, you can shed some light on I will. I know. 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 I no, to keep things. He's always done that. That's not the new thing. Yes, yes. Dude, when you get as old as him, 31 or whatever it is, 30, you know, you got to keep loose to play with these young guys. That, that's something he's always done. Always done. All right. uh, don't hit the panic button. No, I was looking for some excuses. Right. Right. No, I was looking for Look, it, it, I tell you what, I didn't, I didn't listen today to the guys, guys before us, but if Harrison Barnes is a topic on this day, People calling in. Yes, people calling in. Man, it, uh, it, misguided, misguided uh, uh, curiosity, I'll say. Like, Harrison Barnes, I'll be honest with you. Harrison Barnes should be about the sixth thing we talk about today. But he's a symbol of the frustration that fans have right now. A lot of fans wish that was a real bike and that he would get on it and just. <laughs> that's how a lot of fans, again, fans are going to fan. Um, I was thinking about it today. I was thinking maybe it is time to start somebody else. But. Tonight against the Pelicans, for example, who would you even start? Right. If you I start Trey well, Lyles, you have you know, some defensive issues, right? Right. No, Trey is solid. Trey's a good player. There's nothing, you know, uh, it, it, but it goes back to same thing with Kevin Herter earlier this season. Mm-hmm. If you uh, bench uh, Harrison Barnes, what are you expecting to get from him when he comes into the game? And let me say this, and, and I'm going to give Harrison Barnes some credit because he's better than I am. This dude has been a whipping boy and the the you know the 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 guy being blamed ever since he got here. And he has been nothing but professional. How many times when this team was struggling, when this team was trash, they were winning 30 games, 28 games. How many times was Harrison Barnes the guy at the podium mm-hmm. answering all the questions? And so I told we had this conversation 4 months ago about Harrison Barnes. And you guys know how I feel about HB. He's had a decent season. Don't come to me the day after a loss, look at a box score and say Harrison Barnes didn't do his job when three or four other guys also underperformed. But if when, no, no, Whitey, stop, stop, stop. Because I tell you this. We're just getting started. The, the Denver Nuggets won the championship. Mm-hmm. They did not win the championship because of Peyton Watson or Christian Brown or KCP. They won the championship because Jokic, because of Jamal Murray, because of Gordon, the top guys performed. Let's not talk about Harrison Barnes being the difference between 45 wins and 55 wins. The stars got to be like stars, especially today. If your stars don't play like stars, it does not matter what Harrison Barnes does. But Harrison Barnes is too often not a factor. That's not true, Whitey. That is not true. No, 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 no. I said too often he's not a factor. You can look it up. There are games where he's not a factor. I think even Stan Van Gundy said this uh, on the TNT broadcast. He said 
Sometimes Barnes disappears. So that's why fans get so frustrated. So Listen, let me ask right you now, let me when ask. the margin for error is so thin. This is and terrible. Hanging this is, on. This is awful discussion right now. This is ridiculous. Why is it because a bad thing to discuss? I, because why I fans also, are so frustrated how about this? when the team's how about not playing this? well? How about this? I could say too many times Keegan Murray disappears. Too many times during the season Kevin Herter disappeared. Too many times Malik Monk disappeared. It comes and goes with guys. What we need, that's why they're role players. Mm -hmm. Role players don't play at an elite level every single night. Let's talk about Harrison Barnes. Sure, lately he's, uh, you know, had some issues. But and that's the point. But you can't just overlook okay. that and go, well, are, never are mind. Are we having that conversation games. about Domas also? Are we having that conversation? We're gonna are we having that it. conversation about Keegan Murray also? Uh, are we we'll having that conversation about De'Aaron Fox are also? You, are you saying that if you if you can't say it about all of them, you can't say it about one guy? No, I'm saying we're picking on one guy when Harrison Barnes, when we talk about the issues of this team, mm -hmm. Harrison Barnes is like fourth or fifth down the line. Well, are we really starting to show about Harrison Barnes? Yes, Sacramento. That's fans terrible. Are I'm, very I'm, I can't be a part of this. I can't be a part of this. <laughs> You're leaving because fans are frustrated over Harrison Barnes. Well, that'll be the uh, end of the Drive Guys for today. It'll be the Drive Guy uh, with you uh, because Drapes has had enough of the Harrison Barnes talk. Which, by the way, I mentioned because heard this coming in, a number of fans frustrated, and a lot of fans are frustrated right now with the fact that the Kings are not playing well. And they got a huge game tonight against a New Orleans team uh, that they have to beat. This is That's terrible. Uh, I'm back. But let me say this. What? Because if, this, this is a huge game, and we're starting about with Harrison Barnes. You know what I need for tonight? And I don't care what fans are saying on YouTube. I don't care what fans are saying on the text. I don't care what fans are saying on the call line. On this night, I need Darren Fox to be better than yeah. any of the Pelicans. I need DeMontis Sabonis to dominate tonight. I need Mike Brown to be at his best. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Harrison freaking Barnes? Come on, man. Why not? Why not? That's We can talk about him without blaming him. This has been an extremely frustrating season. And fans see Harrison Barnes in many ways as a symbol of that frustration. So I think we have to talk about it. And it would be nice if we could talk about it in a logical right, fashion about it. Let's, without uh, let, let's getting talk so, about to it. the let's, point where you got to, oh, I've had it. Uh, let, let, your let's talk about it then. What do you you got to be better than that. No, what are we talking Like, all right, if we're really starting, like, that's like starting the show talking about 49ers, about the uh, punter. You know, oh, the punter, uh, you know, punter had a good year. Be better, you know, I don't uh, think it was like, a not start, you start with the stars and then you talk about the other guys. I need De'Aaron Fox to shoot a high percentage tonight. I need Domas to take more than seven shots. That's actually, the reason I brought it up, as I tried to say when we started, I was actually trying to defend Harrison. Oh, Barnes. all right, go ahead. Go That's ahead. what I was trying to do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, but you know, it is, it's, and then you say, oh, we shouldn't talk about it. Of course we should talk about it. A lot of people are talking about it. And I like to think we're skilled enough and knowledgeable enough to talk about it and acknowledge that a lot of fans are frustrated and still have a reasonable conversation about it. Yeah, it doesn't mean that we're stomping our feet. And, he's the worst. Uh, or, no, no, he's no, the no, best. If you want passion, then you may have to get some. Uh, you want you want some just settled down, quiet talk. This is the biggest game of the season. Yeah. And I might need Simone to chime back in to calm me down. With settle down. Shooting, what is your problem? You settle down because in here. <laughs> No, nah, because what is Jay, wrong? because Simone, what happened we're talking about Harrison Barnes to start the show. Think about that. If I go out there and do the pregame today and I talk about Harrison Barnes, like Harrison Barnes to me, as much as I love the guy, he's an afterthought. Like Harrison Barnes? Do you understand what? why no. I brought him up? I no. brought him up because Tell he's a hot topic on the station today. No, is he really? And no, I forget them yahoos before us. Those are a bunch of trolls calling in and things like that. I'm not going to – just because These they are, bring it up, I'm not going to do that. Well, I the, did, the hot topic and you need today, to deal with no, it. The hot topic today is this is a must-win game for the Sacramento Kings, mm -hmm. and everybody needs to play a great game. The right. hot topic isn't whether you should start Trey Lyles in game 79 of the season and bench Harris. It wasn't Barnes. a hot topic until you made it one. You just said it was the hot topic earlier today on the stage. I said people were talking about it. Yeah, I don't care what them yahoos are talking about. I'm telling you this. That's our I'm job. I'm trying to talk about.
this huge matchup tonight. How are we going to defend Zion? How are we going to uncork De'Aaron Fox? How are we going to get Keegan Murray? Yeah. How are we going to beat these guys tonight? It's not about Harrison Barnes. Now, if you want to talk about Harrison Barnes, okay, let's talk about Harrison Barnes. What, what do you got on me for Harrison, Harrison Barnes? Harrison Barnes needs to have a good night tonight. I agree. start there, especially defensively. What I was going to say was for all the people that say it's time to start somebody else, it gets down to this matchup tonight and how problematic that is. Harrison Barnes is actually your best bet defending uh, some of the Pelicans' rangy, strong front court players. That was one of my points. That was your point about why he should still yeah. be in the starting. He's, your, okay. he's And I also, as you and thank you for correcting me, uh, you know, you say, well, he's always on the bike. I was thinking, hey, maybe HB's a little, because he hasn't played well lately. He's probably worn down like the rest of them. But we'll 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 not put that away. It's a big part of the conversation today. But you're right. The Kings, we talk a lot about must win, must win. This is, by definition, if you want to finish in the top six, you must win tonight. You got to no win around tonight. That. And you got to beat a team that's kicked your butt. And the thing about tonight's matchup, that, that upsets me and concerns me when I see the Pelicans, and they've had a tremendous season. Give Willie Green some credit. But if I'm in the Sacramento Kings, I'm looking back at the film from earlier in this season, especially in the games here in this building, and how Herb Jones was laughing at us, how all these guys were just mm -hmm. giggling, running up and down the court while kicking our butt. That's what I want to talk. I want to talk about how are our guys going to respond Who's the leader that's going to lead this team tonight onto the floor? It, to me, it has to be De'Aaron and Domas. They have to play arguably their best games of the season tonight. They are the tone setters for this franchise. They are the tone setters out there tonight. I know the crowd is going to be lit. Like De'Aaron Fox and Domas, they got to be the top two players on this floor, not only because of the stakes, what's at hand right now, not only because of the seating, the standings, but because those guys, and I'm talking about the Pelicans, came into your building a couple of times and twice down there and kicked your butt while smiling in your face. Somebody needs to be pissed off and ready to do battle and take care of these guys tonight and beat them and send a message. There's no question. Every time the Pelicans have beaten the Kings, it's been especially painful. We'll run those back down for you, figure out how the Kings can compete with New Orleans tonight in this must-win situation. From the Golden One Center, you, you staying, sticking around? I'm good. I'm going right. to take my blood pressure medicine. I'm going to calm down, All have right. some popcorn. So, yeah, I'm good. We're just getting warmed up here. Drive guys on Sackdown Sports. You never know what you might hear when listening to a Sacramento Kings game. Out of Keegan, going for another triple. Man, is he feeling it. Keegan, can he do it? Yes, there's number 11, Keegan Murray. Keegan steps back. He just knocked down his 12th three-pointer, the Kings franchise record. He's got 45 points. Never miss a moment of Sacramento Kings basketball with Sacktown Sports and the Sacktown Sports app. When you take the time to shop at Folsom Lake Honda, there's one thing you'll always find. Happy people ready to serve you. As a family-owned and operated dealership since 2009, customer service is our number one priority. Our customers love doing business with us, and you will too. Looking to own or lease? During the spring sales event, drive a brand new Accord or Civic. Visit us today at FolsomLakeHonda.com, your one-stop Honda shop. Folsom Lake Honda. Country in the Park is back May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo with Brett Lee Gilbert, Dustin Lynch, Jay Cohen, Walker Hayes, and more. Tickets start at just 46 bucks. Country in the Park, May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo. For more information, visit CITPFest.com. Brought to you by Tough Shed, new dog treatment sensors, and Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers.
the team we thought they were. They got blown out in the first game, and then they lost the second game as well. It's like, ah, yeah. they lost back-to-back -back games. That's tough. Then, you remember, you remember back here on the 4th of December, the Kings with a chance to do what? To go to Vegas. Yeah, in-season tournament. Yeah. What happened? What happened was 127 to 117, Pelicans and beat them. And, and that was a that was a gut punch. That was bad. Yeah. But that wasn't even the worst defeat. No. <laughs> no. Then you go back to uh January 7th, and the Kings had won four of five. It was right after they played the Raptors here. There was a lot of talk about what's gonna happen yeah. with Siakam. Remember, the Kings had that uh that thriller over Orlando, double overtime game. And what happened? New Orleans won 33, Sacramento 100. Mm. So every time they played the Pelicans, it's been it's been humbling to say the least. Yeah, and you know sometimes matchups are just uh, too difficult to handle. You know, I, I look at uh, a team like the Knicks. I, I look at Boston. You know, uh, you know Houston. Uh, those are tough matchups for the Sacramento Kings. And you know we've talked about the length and, and lack thereof on Sacramento. This Pelicans team is long throughout. Trey Murphy. You know, that he's a yeah. long guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think Valanchunas does a solid job uh, against his country mate, uh, you know, his uh, mm -hmm. uh, good friend, if you will, and DeMontis Sabonis. Herb Jones, arguably the best on-ball defender. You know, Zion is a load going downhill. And so I think the makeup of this uh, New Orleans team really uh, causes the Kings problem. And it's not only the length. It's the attitude that which they play with as well. Guys like Najee Marshall, Jose Alvarado. Remember that game down in uh, New Orleans? I think it was. He was a pest, and he single handedly changed that game. And so, and he uh, picked Fox's pocket yeah, right there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're right. Pick this, you know. And so he's a a, a pain in the butt. And, and that's what I'm saying. You know, going to like fifth time seeing these guys, and they've pretty much beaten you handily every time and it's gotten worse and it's gotten worse like you gotta you know you can't just let somebody beat you five times man mm -hmm. I, I don't care man you can't just lay over that's why you got to come out fighting tonight no brandon ingram tonight but then also yeah. uh i don't know if you have any um update on keegan but keegan questionable he's got to right. play right if he can got to he can run he got to play got to and you know it was sort of similar to what we saw the other night uh as well he went into that game uh questionable and then obviously uh gave it a go and so i i fully expect him to play tonight it got to be one of those you know hands all hands on deck if you're healthy enough even if you're 80 percent and can give the team something come on out there and, and do it and so i i fully expect him to play tonight. yeah as you mentioned you'd love for the kings to have their best player rise to the occasion tonight but that's one of the reasons the Pelicans have beaten mm. the Kings four times. They really have done a great job defensively on De'Aaron Fox. We have some numbers we will go through yeah. at some point. I don't want to stare directly at them uh, <laughs> right now, but they've really shut him down. He has been a, for the most part, other than that second game there, yeah. where he didn't shoot especially well, but he had some nice numbers. Other than yep. that, he's been a non-factor. Well, it's because of the length, right? It's, you know, it's and they get of, pretty physical with it. And they get physical and you sort of look at what Dallas was able to do against De'Aaron Fox a few weeks ago. And, you know, the, the book is out like, you know, the best defenders on Fox are, are long, athletic, physical guys. And this uh, Pelicans team, they got a number of them. I fully expect to see Herb Jones mm -hmm. start out on De'Aaron Fox uh, out there tonight, you know. The, the matchup, you know, I hope we take advantage of. I, I think CJ will be on uh, Keon Ellis. Like, you know, if Keon could come with the same kind of uh, fire that we saw the other night and make CJ work uh, defensively, because I, I think, you know, and CJ might be in this hotel room listening right now. If he is, shout out to you, CJ. But to me, he's a minus defensively. And so if I'm Sacramento, and one thing I think we could do a better job of is start targeting the opponent's weakest link as well don't let De'Aaron just have to deal with Herb Jones for 40 minutes tonight make life easier maybe a, a, a one-two switch you know with a screen with Keon and De'Aaron maybe get Valanchunas uphill in some pick and rolls a little bit more mm -hmm. that's what I want to see tonight mm -hmm. because offensively as we know the Kings uh the last what has it been 11 games now whatever since yeah. the league's been out they're really looking for answers they, they are, and, and you brought it up yesterday, day before, and, and it seems like the only answers they're fire, finding is firing more three-pointers. 
you know, and, and that's not what you want to do uh, against this Pelicans team, which is, you know, one of the better defensive teams in the entire NBA. You know, they defend the three pointer better than any team yeah. in the association. And so you got to, you know, I, I think this is a team. They don't really have a shot blocker, a rim protector. So hopefully, if you can beat your man or get downhill a little bit, you can break down this defense. I know Sam was on with uh, Dave today, the uh, Jason Ross show featuring Dave Wagland, and he was saying that he feels the Kings offensively, since Malik went down, they're searching for their identity. I know that's a term we've used a lot this year. I guess that's one way to put it. I feel like fourth quarter of games now, they it, they're trouble. They have trouble executing because they're not sure what it is they're supposed to be executing. Right, right. Because they haven't found something that's really working. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And I, as I watch it, to your point, I don't know what they're trying to execute. Really, mm -hmm. is it their usual first quarter offense? Uh, is it give it to Fox and let him take over? You know, he hasn't been as good this season uh, in the clutch. And I think teams are are doing a great job taking the Kings out of what they like to do late in games. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, upping the physicality, uh -huh. getting a little more handsy, and really junking it up. And, you know, and we said it a few weeks ago. We talked about it. Harrison Barnes said, you know, with Malik out, we got to lean into the offense more. I wish at times you don't lean into the offense. Go make a play, you know? Like, I, I feel like at oh, times. you mean a system. Yeah, yeah. A system. Yeah, 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 exactly. There don't you go taking so shots at Harrison Barnes. I, <laughs> but I'm allowed to because that's my guy, you know what I mean? 90% of the time, I'm a big him up, you know? But I, I think, you know, it's going to be tough tonight, man. Let me ask you this, because we're talking about the Pelicans link and all this. Is this a game where the Kings can win on a defensive end? Or is it too uh, too tough of a matchup trying to slow down Zion? Uh, they they have to have a little bit of everything, right? I, I think they need to win a couple of ways. That'd be one way. I just think, bottom line for them tonight, the shots have to go in. Mm. And maybe that alone isn't enough. They're going to have to defend at a high level. Maybe they're just due, you know, having lost to this team four times. Have one of those nights where everything they throw in the general direction of the basket goes in. But I thought it was really interesting the point you just made about the way teams seem to be taking the Kings out of their offense. Long story short, you got um, your igniter, Malik Monk. He's just not part of it anymore to come in and, and, you know, get your offense going. And it looks like the high post offense through Domas, teams are just collapsing on it yeah. now. And the Kings don't have a yeah. counter for that other than spray threes. And right. when those aren't going in, it's like, all right, <laughs> now what? Right. I right. Mean, no, yeah. you're hundred percent right, man. The darn spray threes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Exactly. It's, it's live by the three, die by the three, you know, and doc rivers all, used to always say to make miss league when you're making them it's great. But then when you're missing them, which they did in the second half uh, last game, what do you fall back on? What do you do? And I think, and, and and this is something, you know, I, I brought up time and time again, especially late in games. When you watch most NBA teams late in games, they give it to their star players. Oh, dude just went down. You see that, Whitey? It's a right, yeah. He's fine. All right, he's fine. All right. Yeah, see? Oh, man. All right. He's good. All right. Yeah. Um, most times late in games, you put it in your star players' hands, and then you run everything off that. You see how the defense reacts. You know, I you know, you watch Jokic last night. Give him the ball, and then he reads and reacts. You know, LeBron James, Jason Tatum. However, you know, and so is it where we give De'Aaron Fox more of the ball in the clutch? Mm -hmm. Run two man game with him and Sabonis. Switch it up. That's one thing that I don't think we do enough with De'Aaron Fox is the pick and roll. We do it a lot with Malik. He's not Monk. that good at it. Oh, He's not as yeah. good at it as he could be. Right. He's as as he could be. Exactly. I just don't think we see it that much, you know? And uh, there he made a couple of passes, I thought, last game against OKC, where it was like, oh, oh, you do have that in your uh -huh. bag. You do have that in your arsenal. I think uh I, I would like to see that a little bit more tonight. I think the problem with what you said, and I think this is fascinating. Most teams, we need a bucket, give the ball to your best player. Yeah. That's De'Aaron in this case. And then when you do that, it's almost like, okay, we're not doing what we normally do offensively. And then that seems to throw everything out of whack, you know, because it's almost like this offense since um, the last couple of years, it's like a split personality. Yeah. There's the, okay, Malik 
and De'Aaron are going to run things offense. And then there's the go through the high post and spray threes offense. And sometimes the two of them, it's like, well, which one are we doing? Yeah. And they have a hard time making the mesh, if you will. That's the way it looks to me. Yeah. And, you know, one thing, one reason might be maybe they don't spend enough time working on offense B. You know what I mean? Like uh -huh. a different kind of offense. Because to your point, when it bogs down, like I feel like guys just are sort of unsure of what to do out there late in games. And it's got it's going to take a heroic effort from De'Aaron Fox, a heroic effort when he was healthy from Malik Monk, you know? And then, obviously, without Malik, who's that other guy that's going to step up and sort of take over, you know? I just don't think we have that, you know? And so, and you look at De'Aaron Fox, too, against a team like the Pelicans tonight, it's hard to go one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. You know, I oh, mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the reason Jokic is so great is look at his size. LeBron, look at his size. Tatum, look at, you know, De'Aaron Fox is small compared uh, to most star players out there. And so, and, and you know, what's interesting. I forget who it was. I don't know if it was Becky Hammond or something, somebody that said, you won't be able to win a championship when your star player is on a smaller side. Well, was, she was talking about Brunson, right? Yeah, she was when talking she about that. Brunson. Yeah. Exactly. And so, I wonder in today's NBA, you know, with the size and the length and then athleticism, you know, how effective can De'Aaron be on a night in and night out? He was fantastic last year, but he's taking a step back. We need that tonight from De'Aaron Fox. Curtis Six on the chat. If the players play mad the way Drape started the show, <laughs> we're winning by 30. I've been having a great day, too, man. <laughs> I was having a good day, you know, had coffee today. Uh, you know, had my therapy session. Like, your boy was in a solid mood until I heard Harris and freaking Barnes. People are talking about HB on a night like tonight. Come on. Uh, when we come back, suddenly I have to confess, I don't agree with it, but I understand what Dave meant yesterday. Uh, I understand what he uh, meant. Uh, All right? Okay. You don't want to sit that one out? Or? I might. Yeah. You might have had a talk with him after the show, and he explained his point or something. Uh, it's next year from the Golden One Center. Drive guys on Sacktown Sports. Has Monty put together a roster that can help make a deep playoff run this season? Just trying to, to give coach options, give him guys that – um, you know, can help us win in a variety of areas. Obviously, our top guys are going to play every game, but there's going to be other times, whether it's injuries, matchups, uh, we've got to have, uh, you know, some variety on the bench for for uh, coach to, to point to and say, go go in there and help us win. Tune into every Kings game this season. On Sacktown Sports and SacktownSports.com. Sacramento weather is brought to you by Folsom Lake Kia. I'm Tamara Berg in the KCR Ray 3 Weather Center. We are looking at a bright and warm day for this Thursday. This will be the warmest day of the work week, expecting highs to peak in the mid 80s, overnight lows into the lower 50s. Get the latest forecast on the KCR Ray 3 News and the KCR Ray 3 app. Spring savings continue at Folsom Lake Kia. Low payments, special offers, zero down deals on approval of credit. Shop your trusted Kia dealership for over 25 years and tell them DC sent you. FolsomLakeKia.com. Power Business Technology is proud to be 100% independent, locally owned, and managed Toshiba Copier Dealer. Local ownership cuts out the red tape, allowing ourselves to never be too busy to personally answer the call when our clients need us. Recognized for excellence in service execution, training, and customer service, we're proud to be named a 2022 Toshiba ProMasters Elite Dealer. Contact us today for all of your business printing needs at 844-POWER-BC. That's 844-769-3729 or visit us at powercopiers.com. Rivercat! Cats fans, we are celebrating 25 seasons of baseball at Sutter Health Park. Join us on Friday, April 12th for our first giveaway of the season. The first 2,500 fans receive a Kyle Harrison River Cats t-shirt jersey. On Saturday, April 13th, we welcome Sacramento Kings legend Chris Weber to throw out the ceremonial first pitch. Weber will also be available pregame for a book signing and meet and greet. To view the complete 2024 schedule and to purchase tickets, visit rivercats.com. Hey, it's Carmichael Dave inviting you to make the switch to electric this spring and save big with American Energy. Stay ahead of those spiking energy bills this summer with up to nine grand in rebates on a new ultra high efficiency comfort system. American Energy is providing huge rebates from SMUD as well as spring specials by installing one of many incredibly efficient AC options available to you right now. Get rid of those fluctuating gas bills in the winter and switch to year round all electric with American Energy. Let them perform a free 
in-home energy efficiency analysis and see where they can help you save for the warmer months ahead. These guys are the best. Been serving the greater Sacramento area since 1981. A plus from the Better Business Bureau. Learn more by calling 916-520-9990. That's 916-520-9990. Dirty Heads Live in concert Every single day Friday, April 12th, 7.30pm The venue at Thunder Valley Special guest, The Elevators On sale at ThunderValleyResort.com Don't miss Dirty Heads Live Excuse me Mada Chevy saves you $10,000 off MSRP on every new 2024 half-ton Silverado, LT, RST, and LTZ in stock after rebate. It's over 50 to choose from. Exclusive all in stock pricing at MadaChevy.com. Together, let's drive. See you for details and 3024. Your home for Kings basketball for over 25 seasons. Sacktown Sports. How about this? Drapes takes is coming up. About, yeah, uh, yeah. I thought that whole minutes. first segment was a uh, Drapes takes. Man, I might was, be out of take. That was a Drapes takes pregame. <laughs> so we have that coming up on this uh, big, big day for the Kings. Yesterday, we talked to Carmichael Dave. We had him on because some people were a lot more discouraged by the OKC loss than I think we were. I know you were celebrating your birthday yesterday. Yeah. That was a bad loss, but some people were like, that's it, I'm out. And Dave, on Twitter, right, he posted a poll, but you just want the season to be over now. And we were, we so we had him on to try to explain it. What, what's wrong with you? There's right. a lot of basketball right. left. Okay. Game. We love the games, and we have more games to watch this way. We don't know what's going to happen, but this is fun. And this morning, it was weird. I woke up, I was like, oh, I see what he meant, and I don't agree with it. But for some people like Dave, Every loss is so painful. Ah, he he and some people are starting to think, man, they're not going to win another game. There, I I would rather just have this end than see that. Now, I, that's a terrible way to look at it. Right. But you know, fans that have been here a long time and have gone through this, some fans start to look at it that way. That's what he meant. As backwards thinking as that is, I, I'm sure there are a lot of people that feel that way. Too. Yeah, it's definitely backwards. And you know, here's the thing: it'd be different. You know, from my vantage point, it'd be different. If this was five years ago, four right. years ago, when we were winning 25 games, 30 games, right? then I'm like, man, can we just get this over with? But this is still a very entertaining team, still a very, very entertaining product, still a chance to make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. now is not the time to be jumping off ship, uh, if you will. And I get it. It's painful. Trust me. You know, when I do those post game shows after a loss, it's like. I can't say no more. What more can I say right. uh, about this team? But, you know, as a fan, you 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 take the loss, you absorb it, you sleep on it, and then the sun comes up tomorrow. All right, let's get back on this horse. Let's try it right. again. Right. That's how it has to be. And so, you know, by, by you know, that, that's why I can never agree with, man, let's just get this season. Mm -hmm. oh, I mean, we've had some great wins. And I think people forget. The great wins. We the, the the bad losses. And my dad growing up, he used to always say, people always remember the bad times more than the good times because it hurts and everything like that. But you also got to look at uh, the life, the king season, and be like, there's been a lot of high points to this season as well. Yeah, you know how it is too when you talk to coaches. A coach could have won. You could talk to any coach who's won multiple yeah. championships, but they're going to say, yeah, that one, but we should have had that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 But I think it's interesting how people process it. You seem to process it more like you get a little angry about it. And some people sounds like maybe Dave, I don't know. I don't hang out with them when the Kings lose, but it's more like <laughs> an internal sort of, Oh, you know, you almost take it personally. It's like, oh, I don't want to go through this anymore. And it's just a bad way to look at it. When, as you say, this is a King season where they still have a chance to, accomplish some things that maybe we will never forget. Yeah. And I, I, I can understand that. Like I said, when you're winning one, every five games or one, every four yeah. games, but you know, the, it has no doubt been a roller coaster, obviously uh, this season, but there's been some tremendous highs. I think, you know, how about the win in Minnesota with no De'Aaron Fox? Mm -hmm. Let's, let's remember that as well. 
And so I, I get it. It's, it's tough. You know, it's like two steps forward, one step back, you know, kind of thing. But I, I take, I like enjoying, you know, I wake up each day. All right, this will be our day, Kings. We got this, you know? And so I, I still believe in these guys. You made a great point yesterday, pointing out that, yes, the Kings have kicked some away this year that they should not have. There's no way around that. They should not have lost those games. But they've won games that they weren't expected to win. And even some of the games maybe they were expected to win, they've won in exciting fashion. You look at the wins over the Lakers, the wins over the Warriors. Yeah. You mentioned how many times they've beat Denver, that win at Minnesota. Yeah. There's been a lot about this year that you can still feel good about that should buoy you and give you some hope going forward. Even though right now, let's face it, uh, they've got some uh, some roster challenges. Yeah, how about the blowout loss against the Clippers uh, a week or two ago, you know, here at home, you know? And so, sure, you know, the, the outlook is kind of, you know, not rosy, you know, for a deep playoff run, but you still have a shot. And I, I go back to Miami last year. You know, how how tough and difficult was it for their fan base and look what wound up happening. Mm -hmm. They made it all the way to the finals. And so uh, that's why I'm not ready to, you know, cash in yet or, or or fold or anything like that because, you know, anything is possible. You know, who knows? You get a perfect first-round matchup. Somebody gets hurt or something like that. You got to play the games out before you, you know, at, at least for me, before I, you know, just get rid of it and say, all right, I'm looking forward to next season. I'm really looking forward to this tonight. Okay. As you said, you've got the uh, Pelicans, and they are number one in the NBA in defending the three-point line, mm -hmm. uh, at least percentage-wise. And they're overall, the Pelicans are number four in defensive rating. We know the Kings have struggled offensively, and they're, they have been perhaps over-relying on the three the last few games. So they've got to have a plan B tonight, right? It's like we're struggling in this area, yeah. and the team we're playing, they defend the three-point shot better than anybody so i can't wait to see what the counter is is it maybe sasha plays i i have right. no idea is it uh focus on getting out pushing pace i don't know but i'm anxious to see how the kings try to counter those facts yeah and i wonder you know like you said is it sasha who's going to be the guy that steps up is it keegan murray is it a, a new wrinkle offensively is it harrison barnes is it fire? my guy harrison yeah. barnes you know who uh is due for a nice game and so you know it that the thing about sports, and you know it as well as I do, the unknown. Nobody knows. It could be a Harrison Barnes seven three point game. It could be De'Aaron Fox going off for fifty tonight. It could be Keegan Murray, Keon Ellis, Davion, and so you don't know. And, and I think that's the beauty of sports here. You know, I, I would say you know in terms of matchup, this is the one matchup where you probably got a good idea, but you still don't know for sure. And so. I'm excited to see how our guys uh, perform tonight. National TV yeah. game, TNT, mm -hmm. uh, in the house, in the building for this one. You know, obviously it didn't go too well last week uh, on national TV against the Knicks or on Tuesday uh, against Oklahoma City. But, you know, it's uh, it's an opportunity tonight to uh, do something good. And the fans have an opportunity again tonight. Yes. To show why they are the best fans in the NFL. Right. And, and this fan base will be rocking. Yeah. Today, Whitey. They yeah. understand. The thing about Sacramento Kings fans, they're knowledgeable about basketball. They know where their team stands. They know what the standings looks like. They they know, uh, you know, how big and how important of a game uh, that we're going to have here tonight. And so this crowd, they'll be ready, man. And, you know, I, I think, and, and it's been a tough season, obviously. I, I'm hoping that this Kings team, the players, respond in the right way because there have been a lot of gut punches in this building where the fans bring their a game and the team comes with its c game i'm hoping we see a better game tonight a couple of quick thoughts here on the chat curtis six says you got to take the lumps in order to make the jumps mm -hmm. uh ryan williams art says after last game i need some bonus to channel some aggression tonight fight extra hard inside get angry domas like someone just slapped your grandma oh. and john williams says uh they need to push the pace and force action into the paint keegan has to be much more aggressible and i don't know if that's a typo or i love that word i mean they gotta be aggressible aggressible right, right? You gotta be aggressible tonight <laughs> i like that with john williams coming out with some new words aggressible yes that perfectly <laughs> describes it we got drapes takes yeah when we come right back to the gold one center with the drive guys on sacktown sports Subscribe to Sackdown Sports on YouTube and watch the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross, Styles and Watkins, and The Drive Guys. Live Monday through Friday from 6 to 6. Plus view archive shows and exclusive content. Subscribe at YouTube.com slash Sports. 
Are you stressing about your IRS tax problems? Have you received notices from the IRS threatening to garnish your wages, levy your bank accounts, or seize your property? You need an ally. Allies Tax Relief has tax attorneys and enrolled agents that are ready to fight for you. They have saved millions for taxpayers just like you. Allies Tax Relief can help put a stop to IRS collections and most importantly, negotiate your tax debt. Here's Brenda, a happy client of Allies Tax Relief. I owe the IRS around $57,000, and they're about to start garnishing my paychecks. I heard a commercial on the radio about Allies Tax Relief, so I thought I'd give them a call. After a day, they were able to at least stop the garnishments, and after a few months of negotiations, I walked away owing the IRS only $301. If you owe the IRS, call Allies Tax Relief right now for your free consultation. Call 800-230-5174. 800-230-5174. That's 800-230-5174. Welcome to a brighter future with Aztec Solar, serving Sacramento since 1980. Everyone knows that solar saves money. How much? The answer is a few clicks away. Visit yourpowersavings.com. It's fast, easy, and reliable, giving you instant insight into your potential savings. I used to pay $400 a month to the power company, and that $400 a month added up to $48,000 over the past 10 years. That all changed when I switched to solar with Aztec Solar. Now it's your turn to stop overpaying for electricity. Calculate your solar savings right now at yourpowersavings.com. And Aztec Solar will email or text you how much you'll save every month. Plus, we've got an exclusive offer for you. Get your solar electrical system for just $9,995 cash price after incentives. Don't wait. This deal won't last forever. Visit yourpowersavings.com today and take the first step towards energy independence with Aztec Solar. Seems like all this artificial intelligence stuff stirs up the age-old debate of man versus machine. Hi, it's Dan from the Good Feet Store, and let me ask you, would you let a robot cut your hair? Would you rely on an app to teach a kid to ride a two-wheeler? Let's face it, some things require the human touch. People come to us seeking a solution to foot, leg, and back pain after trying all kinds of things recommended by in-store machines or website blurbs. An impersonal, generic approach to solving a problem that's unique to you. No wonder they usually don't work. At the Good Feet Store, you'll meet with an art support specialist who will take the time to learn about your needs, your feet, your lifestyle, and then fit you from over 300 models and sizes of art supports designed for pain relief, better balance, and more comfort. See what we can do for you with a free fitting. Just stop in or schedule an appointment. With over 200 stores, there's likely one near you. Find yours at goodfeet.com. Everybody needs good feet. Spring savings continue at Folsom Lake Kia. Low payments, special offers, zero down deals on approval of credit. Shop your trusted Kia dealership for over 25 years and tell them DC sent you. FolsomLakeKia.com. I was in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean when it happened. There was a sudden jolt and our submarine crashed on the seafloor. We were in total darkness. That's Dr. Dejana Figueroa, a marine biologist and STEM teacher, talking about a deep sea dive she'll never forget. It's funny, when I was a kid, I was afraid of the ocean. And there I was, two miles below the surface. But as a scientist, you prepare for that. Using our training and a little creativity, we fixed the sub and finished our experiments. The dive was just too important. Every dive gives us glimpses at things few people ever get to see. Blowing creatures, fiery undersea volcanoes. When we got back to the surface, I kissed the ground and called my mom, of course. But you know what? I wouldn't trade that dive for anything. Dr. Figueroa uses her passion for STEM to discover new things and make the world a better place. She can STEM, so can you. Check out She Can STEM for more stories and inspiration. A message from the Ad Council. The Tribe Guys powering your afternoons Monday through Friday on Satown Sports. Yeah, we could use some positivity today and tonight on the chat here from Linda Harold. Trapes, we were just talking about oh, people are focusing on the bad loss. Yep. Let's not forget all the all the good wins. And Linda says, uh, I was at the Golden One Center when the Kings trailed but ended up beating the Golden State Warriors by one point in November. Mm-hmm. What a great memory. I'll never forget that game because I was watching it on my phone in a department store in Okinawa. Oh, yeah. That was when you are gone, yeah, right? Freaking. And yeah. I think we were down 24 at one point or something like that. And we came back and beat the Warriors. And so 
I understand it feels like it's been a down season, Kings fans, but like we just said, Linda pointed out, there's been a lot of great wins mm -hmm. for this squad this year. Yeah, right now it is time for Drapes. Hey, <laughs> calm down, like calm down. Take it easy, man. Just take it easy. <laughs> Kings fans, it's your boy Drapes. We have to rise up tonight. This is the biggest game of the season. And remember a couple weeks ago when the Dallas Mavericks were on uh, in town, I had my De'Aaron Fox jersey on. I had the shooting sleeve on. I had the, the headband on. It was all hands on deck. Well, this is a different level. This is a game where you got to put on your hard hat here, Whitey. This isn't about fun and games or anything like that. And I think We've been let down so many times in this building by this team that they have to come out and have a good showing tonight. This is as big of a must win as, you know, since game seven of last year against the Warriors. Because here's the thing, and I said it earlier, it's not just about the standings. It's not just about achieving number six. You're going to let the freaking Pelicans pay back. The Pelicans pay back five times? Uh-uh. So who's in that locker room right now breathing hot fire? Who's in the shooting, uh, in, in, in the practice facility right now? You ever see those old school movies where the guy's in jail and he's pumping iron, can't wait to get out? That's yeah. how I need De'Aaron Fox to be tonight. I need somebody to come out and breathe some hot fire. I need a high compete level from these guys tonight. Absolutely. We need that the rest of the year, right? That's yes. the price of admission. That's a prerequisite. If you don't bring that out on the floor, you might as well just turn right around and go back into the locker room and not play. Exactly. You have to have you, that. You have to have that, which brings me to my second Drapes take. I think the guy that can do that and the guy that must do that is DeMontis Sabonis. I understand him and Valanchunas are boys. They know each other's moves. But after what we saw last game against Chet Holmgren and OKC, two of seven from the field, eight points, you're an all-NBA performer. I need DeMontis Sabonis to put us on his back. You know what I need, Whitey? What do you need? I need 25 and 17 tonight with eight or nine assists. I need Wilt Chamberlain-like numbers. This is our season, which is hanging in the balance, Sacramento Kings fans. I need Domas to play like that all-NBA caliber center he is. He has really struggled since uh, Malik went down. Will Z has some numbers today. Mm -hmm. uh, field goal percentage in the last 11 games. Domas before the injury, 60.9%. Since Malik's injury, 48.4%, which is not bad. But it's nowhere near what we grew accustomed to get from him. Exactly, and it's it's you know kind of bad for a guy that doesn't shoot jumpers. Yeah, like, yeah. Most of his shots are in the painted area. So I need DeMontis Sabonis to be that dude tonight. Can I switch gears lastly for my final drapes take? Please. Because this is something that's been upsetting me for years. And please indulge me, Kings fans and listeners, right now. You and I are big golfers, right? Yeah. We like golf. Or how come I can't find the Masters on TV this morning? How come I got to wait till noon to uh. look at TV coverage of the Masters unless you have ESPN Plus uh. and you got to subscribe and you can watch it online? I want to roll out of bed with my boxers still on, cold up in my eye, my coffee not even cold yet, and turn on and watch my guy Tiger Woods. I haven't been able to watch a lick of the Masters because it wasn't on TV this morning. What are we doing, Whitey? It's 2024. We're supposed to make things more accessible. The Masters, you got you need a Rubik's Cube to figure out where to find that thing. Good for you, though, for, for holding out. I know hobby. my friend Jerry Reynolds, a, a great Chiefs <laughs> fan. You know, remember they had that playoff game right. that was on Peacock? Yes. And Jerry said, well, I'm not watching it. And he loved it. He didn't he watch like, it, really. I'm not doing it. Well, so good for you. you no, know, and, and my daughter asked me because she wanted to watch uh, WrestleMania uh, the other day. It's like, Dad, do we have Peacock Plus? I'm like, heck no, we don't have Peacock Plus. I already got 80 other subscriptions. I'm paying $400 for cable. I'm paying $20 for ESPN. I'm playing this for Disney, this for Hulu. This. No, I'm done with subscriptions, big fella. I'm done. I'm fired up right now, man. Between that, Harrison Barnes talk and, and this, uh, you know, subscription stuff uh -huh. and not watching the Masters, man, I, I'm fired up. So that's Drapes Takes. It's brought to you by Ausco Uniforms. Discover why it pays to keep clean with Ausco Uniforms. I have to tell you, talking about the Masters on TV yeah. brings up 
an unhappy memory for me because it brings up an example of when I was probably not the parent that I needed to be. Really? So you go back, uh, my oldest daughter, Lonnie, was she was probably in junior high or maybe early high school, and she was a big basketball fan. She wanted to watch the NBA playoffs. Yeah. And Masters were on. So, And we had two TVs, but somebody else would watch something else. So I'm watching golf. She says, can we turn it to basketball? I said, yeah, as soon as there's a commercial comes on. She goes, okay. Ooh. Well, that was the year that they didn't have commercials. Oh, no. <laughs> and how old was she? She's probably about 12. Oh, ouch. They are very much aware <laughs> That you know, and after you know, twenty minutes, whatever, you go. By the way, just so you know, there's no commercial. You knew that. Yeah. You knew that. Yeah, so, I, <laughs> that's dirty, right? That was. That's I, dirty. I'm not. I'm not proud of it. I'll just see that. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to dish your parenting skills. No, you should, because that was bad. Right. I was like, no. <laughs> I mean, I can acknowledge, like, yeah, that's really not how you. But do. I'm hanging with the kids last night, and my daughter loves watching Dance Moms. She didn't watch this, you know. She's already watched every episode. Now she's re-watching them. Now, mind you, it's my birthday. Oh, that's yesterday. right. Yeah. So we come home from Denny's dinner. Shout out McCooney and my guy Taro. I you said Denny's. Denny's. Come back that Denny's. Dude, <laughs> White Castle or something. <laughs> no, but we come back and I'm like, all right, what should we watch? You know? And, you know, she asked me that. I said, oh, I, we can watch basketball. She didn't say a word. She actually let me watch basketball. Usually she grabs the remote. Oh, but you okay. know what she did? She grabbed the iPad and then just <laughs> sat in my lap while I'm watching basketball. She's in my lap watching Dance Moms. But usually she commandeers the main TV. And uh, for my birthday, she let me have the main TV, man. So, All right. That yeah. was a lot nicer than I was. Right, I exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey, uh, real quick, I'm looking at the text line, a couple of things. Uh, nine one six. Domas needs to use that right hand. I thought it was unlocked with Doug over the summer. Nick said that. What happened to it? Right? We've seen flashes bit. of it, but not enough, you know. And I think you know when you get in the heat of the moment in the action, it's hard to you know go back to something you don't know well. You rely on what you know best. I and just think all of his everyone has flaws. I don't want to overstate it. But they're being magnified now because he's getting so much yeah. defensive attention. Right. No, you're right. You're right. And, you know, he's at the top of the scouting report. Him and De'Aaron Fox and teams are, are doing their best to take it away. Uh, also from the 916, back to our Harrison Barnes conversation. Harrison Barnes is now the Jason Thompson of the Kings. I just can't wait until his tenure is over. Barf. Are we really? This dude averaging 12 points a game. Well, I don't, I don't, I just don't get it. Like the slander and. You know, you can say, I wish he performed, but this guy is saying barf. He's comparing him to Jason Thompson. Like, well, Harrison Thompson. Good comparison, man. He's become a symbol. No, he's, it's not. He's become a symbol to fans of all their frustrations. Fairly or unfairly. A lot of fans right now. What's wrong with the Kings this year? Oh, let me tell you. Uh, let's go to the phones here. 339-1140-1800-920-1140. Ken is uh, hanging on. What's up, Ken? What's going on, guys? Great listening to hey, you. Hey, Ken. What's up, Listen, Ken? Yeah. What's going I on? I agree 100% with what you're saying, but uh, New Orleans would be delighted if De'Aaron Fox takes 17 three-point shots. There is no way he should be taking 17 three-point shots. And I think the one thing you were talking about with, uh, with Kings fans, Lopez, I'm one of those Kings fans that take losses very personally. I'm taking them even more personally when they lose because of dumb basketball. And I think down the stretch, more often than not, lately, they don't play very smart. They literally shoot themselves out of games. They can be close in a game, neither score on a possession, and take a hurry three-point shot. Time and space doesn't seem to matter. And unfortunately, your point guard can't make those decisions. It seems like his strength used to be last year, getting to the free throw line extended, getting into his office and making shots. I don't know if he's he doesn't like getting bumped and he's not getting the calls, but he's not driving like he used to be. He should be taking eight to nine free throws a game like uh, Alexander or uh, OKC, but he's not getting to the line because mm. he doesn't drive and he's not playing to his strip. So until he does that and, and be the player he was last year, I think the Kings are going to suffer. Thank you, Ken. Good Great call, call from Ken. a Good long call. time yep. Kings fan who definitely knows the game. We're back with more on De'Aaron Fox. And how have the Pelicans gone 4 0 versus the Kings? Start with these numbers, which we share with you when we come back to the Goal One Center. Drive Guys, Sacktown Sports. 
No team has owned the Kings more than the New Orleans Pelicans. Thursday at 7, the Kings look for their first win of the season against New Orleans. It's grabbed by Davion. Bullet pass to the corner. Keegan for three. Score the triple. What a super assist from Davion Mitchell. Stephen Murray now has 14. It's game 80. The Kings and Pelicans. Thursday at 7 on Sacktown Sports. We all hear the radio ads about the IRS. They tell you to be afraid, to be scared, and they try to frighten you into calling. I'm not here to do that. Tax Relief Advocates is different. TRA is here to tell you that if you owe money to the IRS, whether it's $5,000, $50,000, or $500,000, we have a solution. It doesn't matter if you're sitting in your car, at work, or with your kids. No matter where you are, call now. 800-583-5795. Don't lose hope. TRA can eliminate or reduce what you owe to the IRS. There is zero risk to you. If we can't reduce your tax debt, then you pay nothing. Our passion is taxes and helping individuals fix their IRS problems. We have a five-star rating on Google and an A-plus with the Better Business Bureau. You don't need to be afraid of the IRS any longer. End your tax nightmare today by visiting us online at tra.com or call 800-583-5795. That's 800-583-5795. Tax Relief Advocates, real solutions for real people. Welcome to the Tap House Restaurant at Bartley Cavanaugh Golf Course. With an array of local craft brews from a selection of 20 taps, the Tap House menu boasts freshly made sandwiches, crisp salads, and a variety of specialty entrees. The Tap House is the perfect place for a round after your round at Bartley Cavanaugh Golf Course especially during happy hour from 3 to 6 daily. Drop by the Tap House restaurant for scenic views, exquisite food, and a hearty welcome. The Tap House at Bartley Cavanaugh Golf Course. I love this time of year when the azaleas begin to bloom and the singing birds' sweet dawn chorus remind us that blue skies and sunshine are at hand. Hi, this is Frank LaRosa with a word about Naturewood Home Furnishings. In sports, the definition for the word master is one who's achieved a high degree of skill, and that will be on display in the highly anticipated golf tournament. In the furniture business, a master is a highly skilled craftsman, an artist even, whose work is coveted by those who appreciate design, quality, and durability. John Keyes was the mastermind of Naturewood Home Furnishings. He knew that you wanted your home to reflect your personal style, whether that was a plain coffee table or a masterpiece for you to enjoy forever. That's why when you walk into Naturewood Home Furnishings, you'll find the largest and best selection of the highest quality home furnishings in Northern California. Masterful. Naturewood Home Furnishings, off Highway 50 at Hazel. Look for the water wheel. What's up? We're talking to Chad Hoblet of Hoblet Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Woodland. Chad, what's going on for Ram Truck Month? We are very excited to be celebrating 75 years in business by doing what we do best, helping you get the truck you need for less. Right now, save up to 11000 off MSRP on new 2024 Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cabs. And with over 500 new Rams available, you won't find a better selection in all of California. Wow, 75 years? That is amazing. It all started with my grandpa and great-grandpa's dream, and it's grown over the years to where we've had a chance to serve tens of thousands of customers and show them there's something special about Hoblet you just can't get at those big city auto mall dealerships. Come experience the difference at California's number one Ram truck dealer. Search, select, and save through their whole inventory at HobletDodge.com. Unbeatable prices, unbeatable selection. Nobody beats Hoblet, period. 11,000 total net savings after 5,000 factory rebates and 6,000 dealer discounts. Rebates include 2,000 Chrysler Capital Bonus Bonus cash must finance through Chrysler Cap to qualify. 500 first responder bonus cash must be current member of eligible first responder association. More than five of the sold net savings. See dealer for details. KHTKAM Sacramento. KYMX HD2 Sacramento. From the Power Business Technology Toshiba Studios, your flagship station for the Beam Team. Should we light the beam? Light the beam, baby. <laughs> Wow, this is some of the softest music ever. The 88th Masters Tournament kicked off today live from Augusta, Georgia, and we have an outright leader so far in the first round as Bryson DeChambeau leads everyone shooting a 7-under in his first round today. He's all done and through on the day. Scotty Scheffler currently sits second all by his lonesome at 6-under on the course. He's through 16 holes right now. Danny Willett of the folks up north in Canada, he sits third at 4-under at the clubhouse while another three guys are tied at three under. Tony Finau finished at one under today, as did Patrick Cantley. 
defending champ John Rahm. He's also in the clubhouse at one under. And the great Eldrick Tiger Woods, Drake's guy, he's posting an even through seven. That's probably why Drake likes him. He's shooting about the same. Those are your Masters leaderboard standings, and they are presented to you, of course, by Nature with Home Furnishings, where it's all about choices and all about quality. higher seeding dreams alive they they try to beat a pelicans team that they haven't beaten all year we have some numbers for you in just a moment that go a long ways towards explaining why the kings haven't beaten the pelicans yet before we get to that on the chat here i don't think you're going to care for this drapes uh, -oh. uh bw he says uh, masters has its own app 24 7 the masters app live coverage all day was watching at 7 a.m uh says yes in the class the kids need to know history so did you know i guess there's an app you, can, you got yeah the app. I, I gotta get the app and, and and stream it and cast it on the tv because what how i watch it whitey i'm rarely just sitting down actually watching uh-huh things are usually on in the background for me and so if i stream it on my phone or on my ipad you're not seeing it because I'm moving around. I'm making the bacon and the egg. Uh -huh. you know, I'm doing things. Big Do you fella. put you still have your boxers on when you're making your bacon and eggs? Because you said you'd be in your box. No, nah, because you, you don't want it the good. grease us. Uh, All right, good, good, on, good. In certain parts. So yeah, good. yeah, yeah. I uh, I, I threw some shorts on or something like good, that. Good. Not have boxer shorts, but yeah. no. And so uh, I get it. The Masters app. All right, I guess I can do that. Um, or, you know, I got to cast it or, you know, uh, search for it on, on the TV, obviously, and go to the app on the TV. But what happened to the good old days of just turning on your TV and finding things mm -hmm. like I shouldn't have to watch college basketball and true TV and all this and got to search. There's too many channels out there right now, man. Too many <laughs> options. I need three, six and ten. That's what it was in Philly when I was growing up. ABC, NBC, CBS, three, six. What and was 10. the public uh, channel? Channel 12, yeah. W-H-Y-Y. Channel 12 yeah. back in the day. Like, yeah. it's just too many. It's too splintered now, if you will, sports. Yeah. yeah. I remember when cable started and all of a sudden it was like you had like five channels. Right. Oh, my oh, my whoa, my God. This <laughs> is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I find myself find not anything. watching anything because yeah. there's too much. Things yeah. are just on in the background now. All right. It is pretty cool, the choices you have, but it is frustrating when you have a million channels and the one thing you want, where is it? I can't right, watch it. Right. And it's and the problem is the Masters is the only tournament like that, I think. You know, especially here on the West Coast, you got to think by like eight o'clock, something got to be on, right? Uh -huh. Think about being on the East Coast and you got to wait till three o'clock to watch the Masters live on TV. You know, it's funny, about 1990 or so, Springsteen did a song. I've never been a big Springsteen yeah. guy. Okay. I don't know, maybe are you RJ? No, okay. No. And he's great, but I just eh. he had a song called 57 Channels and Nothing On. And it was about that. Yeah. But now 57, that's nothing. That's nothing. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know how many channels. Hundreds that like yes, there are hundreds, crazy definitely out hundreds there. of channels. And I could never find anything on. Can the Kings find a path to victory tonight? Listen to this. I think we all pretty much agree that the Kings best chance for a win tonight comes from Deer and Fox playing well. Yes. Uh, on the four games against the Pelicans so far this year, mm -hmm. Deer and Fox, first game he was 5 for 18, 2 for 12 on threes. In the second game, he was uh let's see. Let's see here. 9 for 17, mm -hmm. 2 for 7 threes. That was a good game he had. Then he was 10 for 25 in the third game. They played one for seven on threes. And the last time they played here, he was one for 10, mm. one for four on three. So for the four games, Darren Fox shooting 36% from the floor against yeah. the Pelicans, 20% yes. from the three point line. So they've done yes. a great job of defending. And, and if I'm correct, I, I got his uh, splits here. The 18.3 points he averages second fewest versus any team. And that's only the Houston in which he only played one game. And he averaged 18. He scored 18. And so the Pelicans do a tremendous job. And as you look deeper into the numbers, Whitey, let me uh, get your opinion on this, too. He's taken 70 total shots against this Pelicans team. 
30 of them have been three pointers. Mm -hmm. And so almost half, you know, r roughly 45% of his shots are coming from three against the Pelicans. A lot of that's by design. That's what the yeah. Pelicans wanted to do. You know, but, and also I think too, because when you can't get by guys, you settle a yeah. lot too. And so look for De'Aaron. If I'm a coach, De'Aaron, give the ball up and then keep moving and then get it back on the move. And so I, I don't know what the answer is uh, for De'Aaron Fox, you know, because if you're a great player, you got to step up. I don't care if they throw Kawhi Leonard at you, like, you know, you got to find a way to get it done tonight. If you're De'Aaron Fox, maybe tonight, hopefully is a high free throw kind of game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Get to the line eight to 10 times tonight. For that would be Fox. great. I don't know how likely that is given the way they're calling games this right, week. In the right. NBA. But yeah, that would, that, you got to figure though, if they're calling it that way for the Kings and uh, you know, the Pelicans are going to be getting to the line as well. Yeah, exactly. And you know, what's interesting uh, about De'Aaron Fox's numbers, we talk about the shooting, but he only averages 3.3 .3 assists against the Pelicans also. And so they're taking away his passing as well. And I don't know, maybe guys aren't making shots or whatever, but all right, if you're not going to score and they're making life difficult, hopefully you should be able to affect the game in other ways. I really appreciated Ken's comments before we went to break. He talked about De'Aaron Fox as a point guard. Traditionally, your point guard should be able to help you get into your yeah. offense. And we know with the Kings, they tend to run the offense more through the high post. So De'Aaron is not that traditional point guard. But De'Aaron, uh, excuse me, Malik did a really good job of that at times. And right now, the Kings, I think, are looking for someone who can get them into their offense, whatever it is that offense uh, is. Right, right, right. Do you think, you know, when you look at Malik in that offense, and you mentioned earlier that maybe De'Aaron isn't uh, as good at, at it, have you seen it enough? Like, should they go to it more? Like, I feel like you might be right. Maybe he's not good, but I feel like I haven't even witnessed it. Talking about the lot. pick and roll, the pick and roll, or you know, uh, yeah. You know, one thing that they did, and I think it was the last game or the game before that uh, against the Pelicans, and it was late in the game. The high horn set where you have the bigs the five and the four coming up way up high and setting the screen. So De'Aaron can get downhill. If I'm Mike Brown with a shooter in the corner, with a right? shooter in the corner, you, you got to do whatever you can to get Herb Jones off De'Aaron Fox. Herb Jones is elite. Mm -hmm. He causes havoc against everybody. And so maybe you look for something like that tonight. You, you know, you want to go after CJ, right? Yeah. I want to target CJ, uh, you know, great guy, you know, in the wine business, you know, stand up dude, part of the players association, but I need somebody to cook him tonight. And so hopefully you could get De'Aaron Fox on some switches where he can just go at CJ McCollum. Mm -hmm. So it's a big challenge for the Kings tonight because you're playing the team that defends a three point line better than anybody in the league statistically. And the Kings have been relying more and more on the three point shot. It's not going in as it is. So it'll be fascinating to see what their approach is tonight. Maybe it's just, you know what guys, we know we can make those shots. Keep spraying those threes. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the approach is we got to shoot more. But they shot 58 last game. How many more can you right. shoot? <laughs> you can't shoot more than that, right? <laughs> I mean, I guess you can. I think the record is like 70. Uh, the Rockets uh, back wow. in the day uh, with James Harden and those guys took 70 uh, in one game. And, you know, here's the thing about it. Here we are in game 79 or 80. And we're still talking about the offense and a secondary offense, other ways to score. But part of that's because Malik went down. Yes. But are we now just a make-miss team, a three-point shoot? And whatever happens, if they're going in, great. If not, oh, well. Is that Are we resigned to the fact that we got to live and die by the three now with Malik out? That's what they've been the last, what, 11 games. And I know a lot of people would look at that and say, hmm, that's coaching. But I think it's roster more than coaching. Because, you know, you've been yeah. saying they need that slasher or yeah. that guy that you Secondary. give the ball to. And that guy isn't there. And there's been some hope that maybe Keegan could become that guy. And again, maybe he can, but he's not right now. Let me ask you this, then. Because you're right. And Keegan's not that guy. How many guys on our team can get, on any given night, seven assists? Right now. Two? Exactly. Two. That's it. 
Everybody else eats off of Fox and Sabonis. We need one more guy, a la Malik Monk, Mm -hmm. that makes life easier for the others. Right now, life is too hard for the others when the offense bogs down. Mm -hmm. If Domas isn't feeding you on the, you know, from the uh, high post, we're in trouble. If Fox isn't getting downhill and spraying out, we're in trouble. What happens when the ball gets to Keegan? He has to cook. He has to go in his bag. He has to make something. And I think when you look at Keegan Murray, Whitey, that's the evolution for him. We talked about his defense. We talked about him putting the ball on the floor. Now put up, put the ball on the floor, not only looking to score, but also create. The distributor. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think we need more of that. I thought it was uh, really interesting to see um, Keon kind of – he ran the offense a little bit in the last game, and he struggled with it at times. But, you know, I think that's an area of growth for him. Um, and the more comfortable he becomes doing that, the more valuable he's going to be. And he's such an asset now because – all of a sudden you got this guy that's in his second year. That's like a piece for you. Yeah. You know, yeah. And I've been looking at the Kings and compare the roster to other teams like, OKC. Okay, they've got all these young players. Yeah. Kings don't have as many, but there's one more that they have that they, they weren't sure they had. Right. They didn't know they had really. Yeah. yeah you're, but as you're... far as a combo guard, that's the area I think is a ball handler and distributor. He needs to be better in that area. Who are you talking about? Uh, I'm talking about he, Keon. Keon Ellis. Yeah. yeah. Good as he's been this year. He's been fast. no. He, he's been good yeah. finding his own. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. No. And, and you're right about that. And you know, we talk about OKC, and let's talk about you know what we saw the other night. You know, obviously Shea is the stud of that team, but then you got Jalen Williams, J Dub. You got Chet Holmgren. You got you know Casey Wallace. You got Isaiah Joe. You got guys that sort of know their roles and can have an impact on the game outside of the offense out there. And so, I mean, Monty McNair has some work to do this offseason, guys. Let's let's keep it real. You know, we got to improve the roster, tweak it a little bit, you know, get more ball handlers. Uh, I, I was in Boston and, you know, Brad Stevens uh, basically broke it up into two um, positions, ball handlers and bigs. Mm, mm. Ball handler, like there was no point guard, two guard, three. It was, are you a ball handler or are you a big? You look at the Celtics right now, they got a lot of ball handlers on their team. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, uh, Drew Holiday, Derek White, Peyton Pritchard. Like, they got ball handlers. We need more ball handlers on this team. We need Frankie Cardicelli. We've got him coming up yeah. bottom of the hour. And up next, can the Kings figure out how to play two first halves instead of a first half and a second half because the second halves have not been good. Yeah. Numbers on that are coming up with the drive guys from the Golden One Center on Sackdown Sports. The NFL's leading rusher plays here. The handoff to McCaffrey walks in the end zone. Handoff to McCaffrey takes it right down to the goal line. He does his thing again. McCaffrey goes in motion right. Backwards pass led by Juszczyk. A block there. Hurdles the man. 10-5. Touchdown, C-M-C! You can hear all of Christian McCaffrey's touchdowns on your home for 49ers football, Sacktown Sports. Pros, save big every day when you buy in bulk at Lowe's. Save 10% on bulk purchases of select roofing shingles. Plus, save an extra 5% every day on eligible purchases when you use your Lowe's business credit card. Visit us in-store or online for low prices on the materials you need. Lowe's knows pros. Selection varies by location. While supplies last, discount take at the time of purchase. See sales associate for details. 5% offer subject to credit approval. Exclusions and terms apply. See store lowes.com slash credit for details. U.S. only. Hey, Mark, remember, getting help from Progressive is so easy. You can use the mobile app, chat with us online, or call us. And you pick now to tell me. I couldn't miss Little Grace's ballet recital. Oh, thanks for inviting me, by the way. Did I? Because you know I'm always here for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can use the mobile app if I need help. Sorry, you're in my wife's seat, though? Oh, yeah, I gotta go anyway. <laughs> Tell Grace she nailed her chasse. Get the help you need from Progressive with her mobile app, online chat, or over the phone. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Not available in all states. We 
need some positivity in the facility this evening. Again, it is truly a must win for the Kings. That is, if they want to have any hope after tonight of making the playoffs without going through the play in, you got to win tonight, got to win the next two. You got to hope the Pelicans lose out. And they have what the Lakers and the Warriors. And the Warriors. Tonight. Yes, yes. And those two teams still jockeying for position. Warriors and, are, yeah, they're top. We're playing our best basketball. Right. And, <laughs> and they probably are. They they are. And, and the good thing, though, you know, regarding, you know, the Warriors and, and the Lakers and the Pelicans having to play them. I think you would think those guys would at least still battle for home court for that playing game, that hope nine so. ten matchup. Hope so. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Uh and and so you 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 would hope that they'd go all out to even if they can't get seven or eight, they'd at least want to g- achieve number nine, and that would help Sacramento out as long as we get this win tonight. Would rather me personally not see the Kings play the Warriors in a nine ten. Don't want any part of that. Why is that? Why is just, it just Steph Curry effect, just match up, but you like it better with the Lakers? To be honest, if it, you know, the Kings have played well against the Warriors, I think that would be for the fan base, maybe for Vivek, it would be devastating to lose that game. Yeah. And maybe they win. Maybe they win. But that's a, uh, after last year, then for it all to circle forward to a play in with right. them when right. they're playing better and you're shorthanded, would like to avoid that. Would love to win that game, right. though. And, and, and to your point, also, I, I'll just say this. We've been ahead of them all season long in the standings. We've had bragging rights all season long. The one thing we've been able to hold on is they're number 10 or they're behind us. If they beat us right after, you know, it, it, it's like running a marathon. This guy's trailing you all 26 miles, but that final point two uh-huh. kicks it in high gear and passes uh, you yeah, at the line. Yeah, it would take, be a good punch. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. right. But as we said, positivity, right? So, ah, the Kings would win that matchup. That would be great. Here's one of the problems with the Kings. Uh, the last, what, 10 games or so. The first half, they've played well. And the second half, wow, uh, what's going on here? Again, Will Z had some numbers here. First, second half split here. Field goal percentage, last 10 games, 47.3% first half. Pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. Solid. Second half, 38.4. Wow. Three-point field goal percentage, first half, 40.5. You make some money doing that. Very good. Second half, 32.2. Ah. Wah, wah. Ah. Mm -hmm. Points, first half, 57.8. Second half, Mm. 49.5. And then the differential, first half's last 10 games, 7.4 uh, in the first half positive, minus 5.1 in the second half. So what is, what is that about? Is it adjustments I, that I, other teams good make question. and we don't? Like, that's I, probably the knee-jerk response, right, is, well, they're not adjusting. Yeah. yeah. And I, maybe I, there's some truth to that. Maybe, right? <laughs> I, I can't think of anything else, right? I mean, uh, and, and maybe that not only that they're not adjusting, the other teams are adjusting and coming out of the half. And then you got to make an adjustment in the second half. I don't know. That's that's extremely alarming. And it goes back to the point, you know, so many fans feel, you know, about a 20-point lead. You know, a 20-point lead in the first half is a lot different than a 20-point lead in the second half, mm-hmm. you know. And so when you start off fi- on fire, hot, you know, I, I look at it, I think it was uh, the Knicks game or the Celtics where we hit seven of our first 10 threes. You, you sort of, you know, think, uh-oh, you know, you get a false sense of uh, security. And in the NBA, everybody makes runs, man. Honestly, I'd rather be the team, you know, the, the second half team cooking than the first half team. I'll this, tell you what I yeah. think it comes down to. But yeah, first, let something? me give you one more number here. Free throw percentage, last 10 games by quarter for the Kings. First quarter, uh, 78.9. Okay. Second quarter, 72 and a half. Really? Third quarter, 75. Fourth quarter, 70.7. And I think what this speaks to, to me, is that for as important as it is for the Kings to play tonight, the rest of the way, however long the season is, with emotion and intensity, that's a given. They have to do it. They have to execute especially yeah. tonight against this defensive team. So you have to execute. So the turnovers, we've seen them, and you know, all of a sudden it's like it becomes uh, a contagious disease where all of a sudden the ball just starts almost on its own, right? It's like the ball's flying all over right. the place. What's going on? you got to make free throws. You can't turn the ball over 
And again, with the Kings jump shooting team, they got to make their shots. They got to make have shots. to execute. Yeah. And I, because when you look at it and, and I need to look at these numbers uh, here in a second, but when you look at it, the Kings, they should be an excellent fast break team. They should be, but they're not. So they aren't getting any easy baskets. Whitey, they're not getting out in transition. They're not getting the free throws. You just had the numbers. And so everything offensively is a grind for them, especially in the second half. Mm -hmm. And so if you aren't hitting shots, threes, you're not scoring any other way Mm -hmm. because your half court is based on getting threes. You're not getting out in transition. Right. You're not getting to the free throw line. So your margin for error starts to shrink. It's like you can win, but you can't make mistakes. And that's where they are right now. And I also think that you tell me if you feel this when you watch this Kings team. When one guy goes cold or two guys, it sort of becomes contagious, I feel like. And I don't know if, you know, guys are feeling the weight of the missed shots. You know, I remember Kevin Herter earlier this season when he had his struggles. It looked like every shot you could just feel the weight of it for him. And I felt like in that OKC game, when they had a number of different looks on that one possession, oh, like yeah. each one, it just felt like it, it 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 magnified. And as the game went on, and so maybe they're getting tight too. They're feeling the pressure in those situations. It's such a tricky one because, as you know, the idea of uh, an offense at any level, what do you want your offense to produce? Well, points, of course, but the offense should produce good shots. Right. That's all all you can That's do. That's all you ask. And in that instance that you're talking about. As I recall, those were all good shots. Good shots. But not a single one of them went in. Right. So then it's like, do you need to create different shots? Is yeah. your team just not as good at making those shots as you thought they were? Well, that's the story of our season, though, really. You know, how many times have we seen and heard Mike Brown after a loss? Oh, we had good shots. We just didn't knock them down. Here we are in game 80 still talking about that. Look at the efficiency numbers for everybody on our team outside of HB, probably. You know, De'Aaron Fox, his efficiency is down. You know, look at his two-point shooting. You know, he he was amazing, 50-something percent, 51%, I believe, last year. Look at Kevin Herter. Look at Keegan Murray. Like, everybody's percentages are down from when they were a season ago. Mm -hmm. Compio says the Kings are consistently playing the first half good and the third quarter bad. He says two years now. Compio says coaching issue. Ryan Williams Art says, uh, I like Brown. I'd like a more consistent rotation. Compio says that uh, uh, the Kings have the top rebounder, fastest men in the NBA, very bottom and fast break points. He says, point center doesn't work. He says, read John Wooden's Ooh. book. Then he adds, John Wooden is my cousin. I know. He threw that in there, right? With a little asterisk yeah. at the bottom. <laughs> Maybe of I imagine that. I thought I said that. <laughs> uh, but, but to Compio's point and to John Wooden's point, and Whitey, this is basic elementary basketball. You coach youth basketball. You, we've all been there. What's the quickest way to advance the ball up the court? Passing. Exactly. Don't dribble. Not Pass. dribbling. Not Domas getting the rebound and dribbling it out. And, you know, that's something Mike Brown, you know, talked about, too, earlier in the season. Something he stretched to the guys is get the ball up. Run, run, run. And it just hasn't happened. And, and so Compio's right, man. But this team to be 16th in the NBA in fast break points with the best rebounder and fastest man with the ball, that, that something's yeah. wrong there. I know Compio is clearly in, in your camp, and he's not necessarily a fan of mine, but I agree with him yeah. 100% there. And I think we've talked about this. I believe I've mentioned it. Uh, with Domas leading the break, as kind of a change of pace sometimes, that can be effective because the other big doesn't expect, oh, the guy that I'm guarding, there he goes down the middle of the floor. But when, that's, when he leads the break more than anybody else, you know, it's like, give it to a guard, yeah. you know? Yeah. He comes in, he tries to, sometimes he tries to get a little right. fancy. He's a good passer, not a great passer. I'm sorry. That's a fact. How, how about Domas give up the rock and sprint and beat the other uh, big down the floor, right? Please run the floor. Right. That's old school. That's old school basketball. Exactly. Because it works. Yeah. And I wonder, too, as a player, if I'm playing with DeMontis Sabonis and I know – all right, he's going to bring it up. I got to get out, obviously. Um, I, I wonder, psychologically, does that bother players? Like, if Domas gets it and I'm De'Aaron, I'm looking for a ball, or I'm Malik or somebody, and it's like, oh, yeah, that split second 
of like, oh no, I'm not getting it. I need to run. I don't know. It's 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 mind boggling that this team, which was one of the best, if I'm correct, last year at being you know running the ball and pace and all that, is is 16th in fast break points. Yeah, at the risk of uh, you know mixing sports here. I to me that Domas leading the breaks like that's a really effective change up at times but when you throw the change up every all time all the time yeah guys yeah. are going to sit on it and see off on it right and and i think you know i go back to what i said uh earlier this segment or last segment we need more ball handlers and kia keegan should be able to handle the rock in the open floor keon should be able to handle the rock like everybody should be able to handle the rock in the open floor and i feel like we don't see that enough with this king's team you know what we really need is clicks car to sell it. oh yeah you with I'm me? ready for him i'm yeah. ready frankie our sackdown sports kings insider joins us next on this oh, crucial day for the kings frankie's next drive guys sackdown sports no team has owned the Kings more than the New Orleans Pelicans. Thursday at 7, the Kings look for their first win of the season against New Orleans. It's grabbed by Davion. Pull it pass to the corner. Keegan for three. Score the triple. What a super assist from Davion Mitchell. Keegan Murray now has 14. It's game 80. The Kings and Pelicans. Thursday at 7 on Sacktown Sports. Welcome to a brighter future with Aztec Solar, serving Sacramento since 1980. Everyone knows that solar saves money. How much? The answer is a few clicks away. Visit yourpowersavings.com. It's fast, easy, and reliable, giving you instant insight into your potential savings. I used to pay $400 a month to the power company, and that $400 a month added up to $48,000 over the past 10 years. That all changed when I switched to solar with Aztec Solar. Now it's your turn to stop overpaying for electricity. Calculate your solar savings right now at yourpowersavings.com. And Aztec Solar will email or text you how much you'll save every month. Plus, we've got an exclusive offer for you. Get your solar electrical system for just $9,995 cash price after incentives. Don't wait. This deal won't last forever. Visit yourpowersavings.com today and take the first step towards energy independence with Aztec Solar. Kevin Lewis of National Garage Door. Whether you need to repair a broken spring, install a new opener, or buy a quality Rainer door, National Garage Door is here for you. Call us today to see how we can transform your house with a new garage door. 638-4554 National Garage Door. Spring savings continue at Folsom Lake Kia. Low payments, special offers, zero down deals on approval of credit. Shop your trusted Kia dealership for over 25 years and tell them DC sent you. FolsomLakeKia.com. Fidium Fiber Internet is worry-free and wallet-friendly. Whether you're working from home or just staying connected to family and friends, Fidium has what you need. Plans start at just 25 bucks a month. Rethink your internet provider. Visit FidiumFiber.com. Elevate your golf game at Timber Creek Golf Course in Roseville. Just named to the prestigious Golfer's Choice 2024 Top 25 Public Golf Courses in all of California by Golf Pass. Timber Creek offers an unparalleled experience. Our revamped practice facility features a grass driving range, expanded putting greens, and a chipping area complete with sand traps. Whether you're a pro or just starting your golf journey, Timber Creek is the place to be. Visit us and discover why we're the talk of Sacramento and beyond. Unwind and tee off at Timber Creek Golf Course. Country in the Park is back May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo with Brantley Gilbert, Dustin Lynch, Jay Cohen, Walker Hayes, and more. Tickets start at just 46 bucks. Country in the Park May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo. For more information, visit CITPFest.com. Brought to you by Tough Shed, new dog treatment centers, and Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers. Hey, it's Carmichael Day for American Energy Heating and Air with a question. Have you recently had a technician diagnose your HVAC system? And you were a bit surprised at how much it cost? Or did something seem off about their quote? Because at American Energy, they take pride in giving you honest, straightforward solutions to get that system up and running. Have their qualified technicians come out and give you a free second opinion. It's free. You got nothing to lose but some dollars off of that original quote. They're making the uncomfortable comfortable. They've been doing it since 1981, serving the greater Sacramento area A plus with the better business bureau that's why they keep having customers coming back for more and more and more 
or you can call them and set that appointment at 916-520-9990. That's 916-520-9990 or AmericanEnergyAir.com. Guys, your testosterone level impacts your energy, drive, weight, hair loss, and even ED. Revive Men's Health Sacramento will check your T-level for free. For your free T-level check, exam, and consultation, call 916-277-8599 or visit revivemenshealth.com. Drive Guys, live and local, every afternoon, Monday through Friday on Sacktown Sports. Oh, let's face it. These have been somewhat troubling times for Kings fans. You know, a road trip didn't go the way Kings fans wanted. Yeah, there's still a lot of attainable things the rest of this year, but you got a game you got to win tonight against a team you haven't beaten. We need somebody who can calm us down a little bit, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. Who we got? We got... Uh, one of our outstanding Sacramento uh, sports.com, SacktownSports.com um, uh, insiders, Frankie Cardicelli. Oh, Clicks Cardicelli. How are you, Frankie? <laughs> Fellas, good to be back. Good to hear from you. And, yeah, definitely a big uh, 24 hours here at the old G1C. So I'm excited to get out there and take all the action with you guys. How about your personal Kings Fun Cup right now, Frankie? Is it? Would you say it's half empty or half full? Um. And I'm assuming full means I'm having a great time. Half full is um, like, yeah, things are okay. Half empty is like, ah, I'm Carmichael Dave. <laughs> um, I'm def- I'm definitely like a, I'm right in the middle. Like I, I feel like I'm again, like we've talked about before. I'm, I'm very numb to a lot of these things just based off of what, you know, obviously uh, every Kings fan out there that has gone through over the past 15, 20 years. Like I'm, I think this is more. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see how it all kind of unfolds. I feel like this team has looked so good at times and so bad and just really unpredictable that it wouldn't surprise me at all if the team came out and won tonight and tomorrow. And it also wouldn't surprise me if they won these two games today and tomorrow they lost Sunday because that's the kind of year it's been for the Kings. So <laughs> I really think it's kind of an, an interesting, you never know what you're going to get situation from the Kings. And I think that's, there's no doubt in my mind they have enough talent to get where they want to be. So Frankie's inside in Drapes is anything can happen and I don't know which it is. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Very he much. gets paid big money our, as our insider for that. Thank you, Frankie. Appreciate that, man. I uh, I uh, I'm answers, messing with you. Man. I wish uh, I had the answer. Well, I'm about to, uh, dude, I'm about to tee one up for you, man. And please All knock right. this one out the park. One and three road trip, blew a couple of 20 point leads. We know that. Tell me the reason why. What happened in the second half of those games that, you know, things just fell apart for the Kings? Well, I think you guys kind of talked about it a little bit in the last segment that the Kings really do not have the presence of, of paint penetrators, of, of guys that can get into the, the paint and, and really kind of change their plan of attack. Right now, they've been kind of going through this just hope they can shoot out of it type of, of approach on the offensive end. And again, this is a team that does have shooters, but a lot of those shooters right now are either going through cold stretches or they're out. Like Harrison Barnes right now, I think he's shooting 20% from three over his past six games. He's been uh, pretty much invisible on the offensive end. Kevin Herter out for the year. Malik Monk is obviously sidelined for possibly the rest of the season. Uh, they're relying on guys to knock down these threes that are really, in a lot of areas, kind of over-exceeding expectations. Like De'Aaron Fox is somebody who's had a career year from three, but um, if I were sitting here and telling you that the highest volume three-point shooter going into the crunch time of the season is going to be De'Aaron Fox, I feel like on the first day of the season, it'd be a little concerning, especially when you factor in that those other two players that are taking a high volume of threes are Keon Ellis and Davion Mitchell, both of who were not really high minute rotation guys last year or in the rotation at all. So I think that what is concerning to me is the Kings are really not having a way to switch up their plan of attack when those shots aren't falling and they're hoping they can kind of shoot out of it. And as we saw in, in OKC on a night, they had a, a franchise record for three point attempts. It didn't come around for them. So if those threes don't fall, losses usually follow. What's your opinion on this, uh, Frankie? Because we know the last couple of games they've been perhaps over reliant on threes, but they're just letting them fly like we we haven't seen them uh, before. And you've got Sasha, who I think scored 11 against Boston, and then we haven't seen him much since. Um, and when you're looking for somebody to knock down threes and you have a guy who, you know, it's kind of his calling card and he has shown you flashes of it, why Why do you think he's not playing? Could it be he's not defending in practice or he's not 100%? What would be – I mean, who knows, but what would be your best guess there? 
I feel like what Mike Brown has found with this team on the defensive end is is the guys who he's playing right now bring you that intensity on that end, especially in that lineup that includes Fox, Mitchell, and Ellis. But he's been going with the three-guard lineups a little bit. So I do think when you see Trey Lyles who's come back and, and been a positive off the bench on both ends of the floor, that there, there aren't many minutes, especially when you factor in that I think at times Mike is trying to get things out of Harrison Barnes, who when he is on offensively is very important for this team. We talk about guys that can get into the paint or get near the basket. That's what HB is really good at when he's on his game. He yeah. can put his head down, and, and if he gets downhill, especially on a break, he, he's able to get into the paint, draw fouls, and get to the rim. So I think with Sasha, it might come to a point where – the Kings really do need to try something different when these shots aren't falling and HB is going through a cold stretch. It might, wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt to, to break that glass in case of emergency and put him in there. But uh, I do think that Mike kind of has his, his guys, he has his process right now. And the defensive, the defensive end has been a big, a big uh, plus to this group. They're up to 14th in defensive rating now, which matches their offensive rating, which I don't know if any of us thought that was going to happen, especially near this time of the year. <laughs> right. So I think, I think it's more of the defense uh, to me. And I do think that, if they're in a pinch and their offense goes ice cold like it did in Oklahoma City, it wouldn't hurt to see them throw out there, but uh, that's up to Mike. Mm-hmm. You know, Frankie, uh, you know, I, I, I look at the injury situation with Malik and Kevin, and I, I, I think that's being understated, underplayed. Uh, I'm looking at some of the lineups Mike Brown is throwing out there with Keon and Colby and Davion at times on the floor, and to me, there's no, you know, uh, no, no coincidence. The offense has has slid back. How much do you think the injuries are really hurting this team offensively, and how do they overcome that? I guess here these last three games. I like preface it by saying that I think that the Kings obviously have had opportunities to win games they shouldn't have, and yada yada. Like that. That being said, the bad losses aside, I think it's been huge to not have Kevin Herter and Malik Monk and. And I can't sit here and say that's the entire reason why they might not be in the first round or they might not win the plan. But I think that when you look at these specific games right here where you need NBA players with that experience and with that pedigree and also, you know, above all that talent and, and just that personnel, losing those guys. And Malik Monk, I'm looking at, is, you know, specifically because of what he brought this year during what has been a career year for someone who really can just be a – a player that you put in when De'Aaron Fox is getting a breather, he really picks up without much slack. Like he is someone that can get into the paint. He can knock down a three. He, he's quick. He's athletic. He's a, a, a playmaker with his assists. I think that he has more assists in this year than he might've had near nearly his whole entire career in Charlotte. Uh, I think this year I was tracking that earlier. He really has been a great uh, you know playmaker and, and ball handler. So losing those guys and Kevin Herter as well, who the defense, I know that there was a struggle, but what he brings on offense, his ability to get hot from the perimeter, in the way that he can do it off dribble handoffs off of those, those screens. It's not something the Kings can really replicate. And they've tried to do so with those guys. You just named Davion Mitchell has been a, a huge surprise from three point land. I think that that's been a great part of his game. He's developed Keon Ellis as well. Who's proven he can play both sides of the ball, but having those guys along with Malik and Kevin would just, just made this team that much more deep. And now they're kind of having to dig deeper and look at the Colby Jones, who has spent most of the year playing in the G league or out of the rotation um, Sasha, like we saw, is getting spot minutes, not too much. Trey Lyles playing more minutes. It, it, they really kind of just thrown together what they have here. Kessler Edwards in a pinch for defensive purposes. So I think if you were to have Kevin Herter and Malik Monk, first of all, the Kings might be in a better position standings-wise, but even just better as an overall field going into these games against New Orleans, who will be out without what Grant, Brandon Ingram, but then against Phoenix, who's pretty healthy and playing some good basketball right now. So losing those guys definitely is, is kind of a dark cloud hanging over the team. SocktownSports.com, Kings insider Frankie Cardicelli with us. Frankie, I have a little bit of a preview on uh, your dinner tonight, so plan accordingly. I think oh, that boy. might be some kind of chicken. Is that what it is? Uh, let yeah. me see here. Yeah. Uh, no, I think that, mine looks like a brisket or something. Oh, brisket. Ooh, yeah, brisket right. action. Okay. I guess it is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the how come good. The to this? pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. How come the Kings, what's the number one reason why the Kings – have not been able to feast on roasted pelican at all this year. How come the Pelicans have the Kings number? Well, they're physical. I mean, they're they're top of the they're top of the charts in a lot of areas in the defensive end. And I think one of the, the main stats I'm looking at here for a team like the Kings when they have Demonis Sabonis, the league's best rebounder, being out rebounded by nearly 15 rebounds per game. In in the four matches yeah. with the Pelicans this year, the Kings 49 or the Pelicans have a 49 to 34.3 advantage on the glass. 
they're just getting beat there and getting those second those second chance points really have hurt them. Obviously, the last time the Pelicans were here, the Kings lost by 33 points. They got beat in every single category you can look at. So um, I'm looking at the glass. Can the Kings bring the physicality on that end? And I'm looking at Demonis Sabonis as well to see a guy who's been kind of going through it a little bit, especially on the offensive end. We saw the double-double streak come to an end. I mean, I don't think that's something that was really hanging over anybody's head or something that was distracting him from his play. But this is as good a time as any for him to bounce back against a team that has players he's very familiar with. He's very familiar with Jonas Valanciunas from their, their time on the Lithuanian national team. We've obviously seen him go up against Zion Williamson multiple times now. So uh, I'm looking at the glass and see if the Kings can match that physicality and, and hope they can get over a defense that's very, very good. Frankie, yeah, I had forgotten this, but do you remember what the rebounding numbers were the last time they played? As I looked at these, I remember looking up at the scoreboard during the game and wondering, wait, how can that be? I, I've, I've never seen that before. It was 51 to 25. Remember that? Ooh, that was the rebounding number in the last game. Yeah. Yeah, that, I don't think anyone on the Kings scored more than like 12 or 14 points. It was really just a very strange night. It really was bad across the board. I think that the way I wrote it was, any statistical category you look at, the Pelicans have the upper hand. And that, that really was a game that the Kings would certainly not like to replicate. Right. Well said. <laughs> All right, Frankie, we'll see you in a little bit. Thanks. We appreciate it uh, very much. Uh, positive vibes tonight, right? Bring that positivity. Positive, man. Positive. This is what we, we you know, watch or you know, listen, write for, work for, whatever. This is the game. This is the games we look forward to. So high-stakes stuff at the right. uh, G1C. Absolutely. Thank you. That's Frankie Cardicelli. Uh, check him out. Outstanding Kings coverage. Sackdownsports.com. When we come back, these rankings, uh, we have these tier rankings now in the athletic for wow. NBA players. Okay. Are these rankings wrong or is the Kings overall problem obvious? Next year with the drive guys, Sacktown Sports. Last season, the Sacramento Kings gave us a little bit of everything. A Pacific Division type GM of the year, coach of the year, clutch player of the year. All stars and all NBA performers. Plus, we got to light the beam. Here's a steal by Fox. The breakaway. He's got the rip with the left hand. What does this season have in store? Find out. Each and every Sacramento Kings game can be heard right here on your proud home of the beam team. Sacktown Sports and SacktownSports.com. Sacramento weather is brought to you by Folsom Lake Kia. I'm meteorologist Heather Waldman in the KCRA3 Weather Center. Comfortable this evening. Temperatures on their way down into the low 50s for Thursday morning. It'll be a warm afternoon. Highs in the low 80s. Plenty of sun and light winds. Get the latest forecast on the KCRA News and the KCRA app. Spring savings continue at Folsom Lake Kia. Low payments. Special offers. Zero down deals on approval of credit. Shop your trusted Kia dealership for over 25 years and tell them DC sent you. Folsom Lake Kia. Power Business Technology is proud to be 100% independent, locally owned, and managed Toshiba Copier Dealer. Local ownership cuts out the red tape, allowing ourselves to never be too busy to personally answer the call when our clients need us. Recognized for excellence in service execution, training, and customer service, we're proud to be named a 2022 Toshiba ProMasters Elite Dealer. Contact us today for all of your business printing needs at 844-POWER-BZ. That's 844-769-3729. Or visit us at Power Copier. Are you tired of your tee shots ending up in the adjoining fairway while the rest of your foursome is hitting it down the middle? Well, experts will tell you that being properly fitted for golf clubs will help you strike your drive center cut. The Hagen Oaks Player Performance Studio and its team of trained PGA professionals are ready to help you get rid of your banana balls and duck hooks. Hagen Oaks Indoor-Outdoor Player Performance Studio fittings are available seven days a week. Make yours today by calling 916-808-2531. That's 808-2531. What drives you? At 303 Car Care, we're driven to put the best detailing products in your hands. We create every formula, fill every bottle, and test every batch of 303 at our Chicago headquarters, always with quality in mind. From cleaners and coatings to our flagship aerospace protected, you can trust that every 303 product does what the label says it's going to do. That's because 303 is driven by quality. Available at most auto retailers and Amazon. Timmy, everybody. Great job. Next up, we have Samantha. Ten times better performance can make a big difference. Castrol Edge motor oil gives your engine ten times better high temperature performance. Castrol Edge, better oil for maximum performance. 
Now through April 23rd, get a $15 gift card when you buy five or more quarts of Edge or Edge High Mileage Full Synthetic only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Claim based on Sequence 3H test versus API SP test limits. Ooh, ma. What was that? That is business phone bliss with the UMA cloud phone system. It handles all our voice, video, and messaging needs. You sound very calm. I am. UMA has everything I need to run my business more efficiently, like virtual receptionist, call routing, and video conferencing. And it starts at just $19.95 per month per user, plus taxes and fees. UMA. Nice. Find your business calm at UMA.com slash radio. Don't pay retail for your diamond engagement ring or gift. Come to CleanOrigin.com, founded by a family of leaders in the diamond industry for more than a century. We're experts in ecologically friendly lab-grown diamonds because that's all we do. Come clean with Clean Origin, the only diamond jewelers who give you a 100-day, no questions asked return on your purchase. Head to cleanorigin.com or one of our retail stores and mention code RADIO10 to receive 10% off. That's cleanorigin.com, code RADIO10. So here's a fact. 85% of the population will suffer from foot pain in their lifetime. That's almost everyone. So you'd think there'd be plenty of healthy long-term remedies, but there just aren't right? Hi, I'm Dan from the Good Feet Store. You know, people come in all the time sharing the same frustrating story. Bought this, tried that, been there, done, whatever, all different kinds of things, but all with a similar result. Nothing. A discouraging and endless cycle of disappointment. If this rings a bell, don't despair. There is hope. If you think you've tried everything, you probably haven't tried Good Feet Art Supports from the Good Feet Store. They're designed to relieve, even eliminate, the pain commonly caused by certain foot conditions like plantar fasciitis, bunions, flat feet, and others. Plus, provide better balance and increased comfort. See what we can do for you with a free arch support fitting. Just stop in or schedule an appointment. With over 200 stores, there's likely one in your neck of the woods. Find yours at goodfeet.com. Everybody needs good feet. It's time to trade in and trade up at Northern California's number one Honda dealer, Stockton Honda. Whether you're shopping new or pre-owned, Stockton Honda has the selection and savings. Plus, get top dollar for your trade. Come in today or go to StocktonHonda.com. It's all a click away. Anytime, anywhere, it's all here. StocktonHonda.com. Your flagship station for the Bean Team, Sacktown Sports. We ask for positivity. We get it, of course, on the chat from the end. Those are the toughest game left on the schedule. With a win tonight, we should win out, in my opinion. How about That's that? what I'm talking about, man. We need that positivity in our lives right now. Yes. Manny, too legit. Ingram is out. We need to destroy Zion. Exactly. That's the man. That's that's the kind of love I need, Sacramento Kings fans. Not this get the season over with. Can we Mike just Brown, end it now? Harrison Barnes? Like, no. We're fired up. We're ready for tonight. And do you want to know what Compio's favorite part of our chat with Frankie was? What? At uh, 3.33 on the chat, Campio said, Selena! It was when oh, Selena, he saw brought, Selena. <laughs> Selena brought your food up here. Oh, Campio my gosh. Watching, obviously, on the YouTube, which we appreciate. Yeah, yeah we got the yeah. new grub. We got the new <laughs> grub here. Thank you, Selena. I'm going to have to uh, talk to her about the cookie uh, choices, though. <laughs> what do you mean? The double chocolate's just not cutting it. Oh, they do have those oatmeal ones down there, but nobody exactly. wants them. Exactly. Uh, me and RJ it's want like, oatmeal, right? It's like a pile nope. of them because nobody wants oh, them. Oh, I want <laughs> RJ said, nope, you want it. I'm the only, me and Alan Styles. That's about it, man. But the cookie, they got a whole so room like, full of them because no one ever eats them, and they just, what do we do with them? I know, right? It, yeah, dude, I'm, next break, I'm going to go down and get me a cookie, an oatmeal raisin one for sure. Okay. Uh, the All Athletic right. today has uh, some – some player tiers, which are basically like player rankings. Yeah. I mentioned this because was it yesterday we talked about the ringers top, top 100, 100 and yeah. they still don't have Malik in there. So this is their pre playoff player tiers. Um, and they have tiers three and four today. So tiers one and two, the very best players are not listed yet, mm -hmm. but what do we have here? Tiers three and four, according to the uh, athletic tier three, Gobert, Tyrese Halliburton, three, a tier three. Oh, Holmgren, Kyrie, Dame, Zion, Trey Young, Jalen Brown, DeRozan, uh, Drew Holiday, Markinen, Kristaps, Porzingis, Siakam, Hollow, 
Beal, Ingram, Maxi, Derek White, and Jalen Williams. That's tier three. Okay. Tier four is Ananobi, Desmond Baines, Scotty Barnes, Mikael Bridges, Garland, Aaron Gordon, Draymond Green, Jaron Jackson, Brooke Lopez, CJ McCollum, Middleton, Brandon Miller, uh, Evan Mobley, Porter, Randall, Domantis Sabonis. Oh, wow. Domantis Sabonis. Tier then they four. have Jen Goon, Van Vliet, Franz Wagner, Jared Allen, Herb Jones, Murphy, uh, DeJounte Murray, Cat, Miles Turner, Lamelo, RJ Barrett, Miles Bridges, KCP. Somewhere down here they have. As you're naming these, is these like. Malik Monk is 4C. Those are the two. Okay. Kings. All right. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So, yeah. So I assume then tiers two and one when that comes out, Darren Fox will be somewhere in there. Somewhere in there. Probably, probably. tier two. It's, uh, it's Chris Haynes, isn't it? Man, I'm about, hey, you walking up. Uh, when you coming on the show, big dog? You want to come on? Come on and show. Chris, what you got going on? <laughs> oh, he's going to the phone. I got to do this. I got to do that. Come holler at me after that. All, yeah. right. All right. Yeah, yeah. Chris Hayes. Well, I'm about to give him a two-piece no sauce. He rolling up on me <laughs> like that. But, uh, man, that's interesting. As you were going through that list, I thought, all right, then we got two guys in the top two tiers then. Because I thought Domas, like, oh, he's not in tier three. Tier four. Tier eight. four. Eight. Yeah. So and, basically, we got one guy in the top three tiers. Yeah, that's the Aaron Fox. Yeah, and like I said, Malik is four C with like guys like Zach Levine, Tyler Hero, and Emmanuel Quickly. So you know maybe these are all wrong, but you look at this list. You look at the one in the uh, the Ringer yesterday. Right. Is it possible that the Kings issue right now? The reason they're having problems winning some of these games is because they don't have as many good players as the other teams. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Then maybe we're silly for getting a little bent out of shape over some of these games, if that's the case. No, I, and especially with the injuries, we just don't have the horses right now. I agree. You know, we just don't have the horses right now to, uh, you know, actually win these games. We could play well for a half. We could play well for a quarter. But to actually win, it's going to take high level throughout. And we're just shorthanded right now. But don't you think the plan would have been for – Keegan to at least be in one of those. Oh, yeah. Keegan's not even in. Yes. I, I think so, especially after the summer that he had, the expectations. And I think within the organization, they expected Keegan to make a, a maybe a bigger leap. And, and I look at it, I look at all the contenders, you know, Denver, Minnesota, OKC, even. They got two or three guys in the top two or three tiers. Yes, sir. Are, are, you know, we got one guy in the top three tiers. I think ultimately, you know, mm -hmm. let's look at it. Assuming, again, that's assuming this is correct. This, this is, is correct. all opinion. Are we as talented as the Pelicans? Let me ask you that. No, not both right teams now. Healthy. Say, not right now. Uh, what about both, teams, both teams completely healthy? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I think they have more upper level talent. Like, you know. Zion, mm -hmm. Ingram, Ingram, a former All Star, CJ, mm -hmm. like they got upper level guys. You know, maybe not tier one, Murphy, but tier two, Jones. three guys. Yeah. yeah, you know, are, are we more talented than Phoenix? There's a weird. Uh, don't have the three impact. I'm gonna say there. no. Yeah, I, I have to say no. I'm I say, don't want to say no, but I have to say no. Are we more talented than Dallas? No. So what are we doing here then, Whitey? I know. <laughs> you know, know, like that's well, why I think the people that criticize Mike Brown need to look at this side of the right. As well. Exactly. Like, I, and we could argue, and last year was an anomaly. We could argue that maybe they overachieved last year, and especially without Kevin Herter and Malik Monk uh, here recently. I mean, and think about it. They're at 45 wins with a chance to, at best to get to 48. Mm -hmm. And and Carmichael Dave had a, a tweet up there, a poll. You know, he's king of the polls. He's always, uh, you know, throwing out the polls. Has this team overachieved or underachieved this year? And I might say that they're probably just spot on. With, yeah, I would say C. C, right. Yeah, exactly. Achieved. That, they are what they, they've yeah. achieved. Yeah, uh -huh. I don't think they've overachieved. I don't think they've underachieved. Like, I think. They've achieved, like you said, because we just mentioned all the teams right around them, you could argue are more talented 
than the Sacramento Kings, right? The, now. the problem is that the Kings, some of the players, you know, we talk about HP, but also, as you said, uh, Keegan, some others, they've been so inconsistent this year. Mm -hmm. And is that because they're not, you know, sometimes you're inconsistent because you're just not as good, right. or is there something here that just hasn't clicked yet? That we don't know, but whatever yeah. it is, it, if it's something that hasn't clicked yet, it better click tonight. It, it better click tonight. And, and some of the younger guys are our guy. Colby Jones is out here. Uh, Jordan Ford about to get some warm up action going on. And, you know, what's interesting about this, Whitey, and this is something I talked to Doug Christie about. This is a couple of years ago. And this shows you the mindset that the Pelicans have coming in. You know, traditionally, the Kings warm up in front of their bench. And the other team warms up in front of there. Like, that's the side they choose usually. But there are a few teams in the NBA that say, uh-uh, we're going to put you on the other side. And so even before the game has started, the Pelicans are sort of sending in a message. That's something from Doug. Him and I have talked about this. Like, when I go into the arena, I'm not, hey, your usual sweet cut. No, we're changing it up tonight. You going down there to already warm Already knocking up. you out of your routine. Yes, they're already throwing you uh, for a little bit of a loop. And so... Uh, that's the kind of mindset the Kings got to have too tonight, man. When they, when they, you know, lace them up and, and play them, it's like, all right, we're, we're, we're going to strap them up too and come at you. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a key point, uh, for tonight's game. If the Kings allow the Pelicans to do this again tonight, well, it, then it's playing time mm -hmm. next year with the drive guys. As we roll on from the golden one center on Sacktown sports, Kevin Herter plays here. It's Herter. He's been hot. He fires. He's still hot. Kevin Herter from downtown has a 15-point first quarter. Sacktown Sports is your proud home of the Sacramento Kings. Chill Group is not a law firm. This story is called The Ugly Truth About Timeshare. If you think you've done your family a favor by buying a timeshare, you need my help. Hello, I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group. Ten years ago, I started helping folks cancel their timeshare. Then the process started what's now called the timeshare cancellation industry. The ugly truth is when you buy a timeshare, you can't tell me how much it's going to cost or when it's going to end. I recently helped a couple that had their maintenance fees go from $800 to $3,200 a year. They also received a $4,000 assessment for a hurricane that was over 1,000 miles away. Sound crazy? The crazy thing is this never ends. Call my office now. If we take you as a client, I guarantee we'll cancel your timeshare or you'll pay nothing. Call for your free information kit. Call 800-462-3333. That's 800-462-3333. 800-462-3333. I'm Ken Korak with your Green and Gold Report, brought to you by Xfinity 10G, the network made for streaming. Well, on the same week, the A's announced that beginning next year, they'll be playing at Sutter Health Park until the move to Las Vegas. Paul Blackburn did some very impressive things on the mound. When he blanked the Tigers for six innings in Detroit, it gave him 13 consecutive scoreless frames to begin the season, the fourth best total in Oakland history, the record being set by Matt Keough with 16 back in 1980. Want more speed? Well, Xfinity just increased their internet speeds, and they're faster than ever. It's time to get more out of your internet with faster speeds from Xfinity. Now through June 21st, get 150 megabit Xfinity internet for only $19.99 a month for 12 months with one year contract. That's double the speed for the same great price. Click, call, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay with store bank account. Restrictions apply. Equipment, taxes, and other charges extra. After promo, regular rates apply. Actual speeds vary. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Kyle Draper here for Mercedes-Benz of Stockton. I get a lot of compliments from my friends about my new EQS SUV. Mercedes has proven that electric cars can be gorgeous and stylish. My EQS is the finest vehicle I've ever had. And some of my friends have even asked, what's it really like to have an electric Mercedes? Is it easy to own and operate? Is it easy to charge? Well, it's as easy as owning a regular gas guzzler, except you never have to put gas in it. And I never stress about battery charging. It's got a long range, so no problem there. And it's easy to charge. You just plug it in, and that's it. Right now, Mercedes-Benz of Stockton is offering up to $19,000 in Mercedes-Benz incentives on select new vehicles and certified pre-owned Mercedes vehicles, as low as 1.99% APR for qualified buyers. So head on out to Mercedes-Benz of Stockton. It's just a half hour from Sacramento, right off I-5, or online anytime at mbfstockton.com. I was in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean when it happened. 
there was a sudden jolt and our submarine crashed on the seafloor. We were in total darkness. That's Dr. Dejana Figueroa, a marine biologist and STEM teacher, talking about a deep sea dive she'll never forget. It's funny, when I was a kid, I was afraid of the ocean. And there I was, two miles below the surface. But as a scientist, you prepare for that. Using our training and a little creativity, we fixed the sub and finished our experiments. The dive was just too important. Every dive gives us glimpses at things few people ever get to see. Blowing creatures, fiery undersea volcanoes. When we got back to the surface, I kissed the ground and called my mom, of course. But you know what? I wouldn't trade that dive for anything. Dr. Figueroa uses her passion for STEM to discover new things and make the world a better place. She can STEM, so can you. Check out She Can STEM for more stories and inspiration. A message from the Ad Council. Welcome to a brighter future with Aztec Solar, serving Sacramento since 1980. Everyone knows that solar saves money. How much? The answer is a few clicks away. Visit yourpowersavings.com. It's fast, easy, and reliable, giving you instant insight into your potential savings. I used to pay $400 a month to the power company, and that $400 a month added up to $48,000 over the past 10 years. That all changed when I switched to solar with Aztec Solar. Now it's your turn to stop overpaying for electricity. Calculate your solar savings right now at yourpowersavings.com. And Aztec Solar will email or text you how much you'll save every month. Plus, we've got an exclusive offer for you. Get your solar electrical system for just $9,995 cash price after incentives. Don't wait. This deal won't last forever. Visit yourpowersavings.com today and take the first step towards energy independence with Aztec Solar. From the Power Business Technology Toshiba Studios. KHTKAM Sacramento. KYMX HD2 Sacramento. Sacramento's official home for the San Francisco 49ers. Touchdown! San Francisco! Set down sports. Bryce and DeChambeau, he leads everyone shooting at a 7-under in this round today. He's all done and through for the day, as is Scotty Scheffler, who currently sits second, all by his lonesome at 6-under. Three competitors are tied at 4-under, including Max Homa, who's through 10 holes on the day, while five players, well, they're tied at 2-under. Tons of golfers lined in the weeds today at 1-under. Tony Finau, Patrick Cantley, Rory McIlroy, Tommy Fleetwood, and the great Eldrick Tiger Woods who's through nine holes so far on his day. Defending champ John Rahm, well, he shot a one over on the day. Your Masters leaderboard standings are, of course, presented to you by Naturewood Home Furnishings, where it's all about choices and all about quality. Now more of the Drive Guys. <laughs> The only station in Sacramento giving you local sports coverage from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Sacktown Sports. Jay wasn't having that Masters music. That <laughs> stuff and all. Yeah, he's like, nah. Yeah, we had to change that real quick, fellas. <laughs> Dude, it just got me down. I'm saying I'm ready to go. There, I'm ready though. to stand on the couch tonight. And that, that stuff just put me to sleep. <laughs> stand on the couch. <laughs> Jay probably reads those scores and says, What's the big deal? This is a hobby. It's not that hard, right? right? Jay, oh, you hard. don't even want to get me started about the Masters tournament. We don't even want to go down oh, that road. Let's Masters just take. Huh? Yeah, let's just just that. I mean, look, there was a lot of times they weren't allowing people like us, me and you, Drake. So, yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, true. Uh, true. You know, know, a lot of people celebrate the Masters, and I get it. I understand it, but there's some there's some things in the closet a lot of people don't like to discuss about the Masters. Mm -hmm. No, you're right. My my boy went a few years ago. And, you know, he felt a little uncomfortable really down there. Yeah. yeah. You know, just this the way he was recently. And this is like a couple years. Ten years ago or so. Okay. But yeah. Within the last 10 years. And, you know, he lives in Atlanta. He said, I'm going to go check it out. He, he, you know, got somehow got access. And, you know, it, it he felt a little uncomfortable mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So uh, Tiger's trying to set the record for most consecutive Masters cuts. Tight, made. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well on his way. He's tied for 17 mm -hmm. right now, so he's in a good position. Uh, still a lot of golf left to go, obviously, but uh, he's in a good spot. 
And we're getting ready for the Kings and the Pelicans. Sense of anticipation. You could almost cut it with a knife. We've got players on both teams on the floor already. And so we spin forward to tomorrow when the Kings will be getting ready to play the Suns. Perhaps Isaiah Thomas will be out on the floor early. And if he is, your drapes is ready I'm to pounce. down, yes. I'm walking down, and it's funny. IT tweeted out that, you know, he's excited to come to Sacramento. You know, he hit up uh, – pizza guys you know can he still get the hookup when he comes in this building if i see him warming up i'm not ducking and dodging i'm not afraid of the smoke you know if he got a problem with me we're gonna walk down there and talk it out that's my guy from boston man you know we're gonna hammer it out like men and then get him on the show we'd love to get him get him on the show so that's tomorrow and obviously uh the king's got a lot of pizza left in the box for tonight we were just talking about the athletics rankings and they have domas uh, tier four and they also have Malik further down in tier four. And Bo on the chat says, that is uh, the most disrespectful list I've ever heard. Domas <laughs> tier four, shake my SMH. Oh, that, SMH. oh yeah, he, he's fired up. I'm with you, Bo. Uh, how disrespectful is that? Tier four. Uh-huh. With uh, the Shingoons of the world and everything like that. We're talking, at least I am, about all NBA. At worst, he should be tier two. In yep. my opinion. Mm-hmm. And so, Bo also says, uh, I want the Kings to win 50. I wanted the Kings to win 50 coming into the season, but since we lose some of the winnable games, that goes into the water. Yeah, that's, yeah I guess. It's basketball. Yeah, it's, it's basketball. And I, I, I went through the exercise yesterday. Look at the teams that we're grouped around. They all have bad losses, just like the Sacramento Kings. We don't have the monopoly on that, mm-hmm. on bad losses. So, yeah. Well, here's what the Kings, one thing they need to do tonight if they're going to have a chance to beat the Pelicans. And Frankie uh, touched on it when Frankie Cardicelli yeah. joined us earlier. The Pelicans have flat out embarrassed the Kings mm-hmm. in the rebounding department so far. Uh, as we know, they played four times in the first game. The Pelicans out rebounded the Kings 55 to 36 mm. with 10 offensive rebounds. The next game, which was just two days later, it was 48 to 38 Pels. So it's closer. Uh, then they played here in January 42 to 38. Okay. Uh, four rebound edge. That's obviously uh, reasonable, but yeah. uh, the Pelicans had 13 offensive rebounds in that game. And then the last time they played 51 to 25. Oh, I remember looking at the scoreboard rebounds. going, wait, what? Right. I remember 51 yeah. to 25. Uh, they are rebounded. Unbelievable. Uh, 25 a, rebounds. Yeah. And a day when it looked like the Kings just, man, yeah. they should not even have shown up today. I remember that one because my son was in the building and, he texted me, Dad, look at the rebounding stats. And I was yeah. like, you know, you ever see those memes where the eyes come out of somebody's head? I was like, <laughs> whoa, really? That That's, uh, yeah, it's 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 embarrassing. And, and, you know, to your point, though, we talked about it. You know, when you only got one rebounder in Domas, you know, it's a, a lot of times it's being left on him. And I thought when you looked at it also in that series against the Warriors last year, rebounding was an issue. How many times did we see Domas wrapped up with Looney begging for his guys to come back and help uh, rebound the ball. And so that's going to be critical tonight with uh, big balance units out there. You know, the Pelicans have had some success lately going small. Yeah. I don't even know. I mean, looking at these rebounding numbers, um, I don't even know if that's something that they would uh, be trying tonight. They may not need to. I think that plays into the Kings' hands. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 I, I don't think I would do that if, if I'm New Orleans. And, you know, the one area where the Kings, you know, could have an advantage. The Pelicans are not good in close games. 13 and 15 in clutch mm. games. Losing record. Uh, 10th worst uh, in the NBA. I have not noticed uh, that. Yes, yes. Okay. So There's you something. Know, that's, it, you know, we just got to stay within striking distance. Don't yep. let them come in and do what they did right. uh, last time out and then, you know, basically uh, run away with it from there. I, I like our chances late in, get in this game because, like I said, Pelicans 13 and 15 in uh, clutch situations tonight. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned this earlier, and I'm a little fuzzy on it. I remember it partially. Wasn't wasn't their coach laughing at the Kings or – at, at that at that last game of summer, at half court, or they were they were having a wonderful time. They were having a yeah, wonderful yeah, time. Yeah, I don't know if it was Willie Green uh, that did that because him and Mike Brown, yeah, are really close, a mutual respect. But Herb or maybe Jones, it was, maybe it was the game when they clinched the trip to Vegas. But there was one. Oh yeah, game. it was that game. Yeah, 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 that game. They were having a party out yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yes, uh, Herb Jones, uh, Trey uh, Trey Murphy. 
Najee Marshall, yeah. all those guys, they were yucking it up. And, you know, because I think in that game, they remembered that, sure, they beat us twice in New Orleans and that the narrative was, all right, we got them now back yeah. here in this building. Yeah. So we're ready for them. And they came in and did the same exact thing. And so, no, you're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I don't know if you agree. To me, I know that Kings have a score to settle and they've got to play with emotion. That's true, but they just really need to focus on execution tonight. The other stuff takes a backseat to the fact that you have to win this game. And, you know, and there's only three games left here. And you could end up in a much better position if you take care right. of your business in these last three games. If you're ninth or tenth, I I would not want to be in that predicament. Right. If it comes to that, we'll we'll deal with it. But man, you want to avoid that. Right. At ninth or tenth, you got to win two games yes. to get in. And you know, with the way this team has played and been, you know, sort of up and down, roller coastery. I, I don't like that. I, I like our, our chances in getting up for one game, but tonight is basically far as i'm concerned playoffs or season over like can they from nine and ten spot make it yes but it's highly unlikely uh and so you got to keep your playoff hopes alive man it, it could end tonight and you'd be forced to be in the play -in. Uh great point by brandon deedsman on the chat what i think you you're think? right brandon that last game that they played here which was the 133 to 100 game Brandon says, I think Ooh. that was a game Coach Brown said he wished the fans could get a yeah. refund. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, I remember that. You're right. That, that was thoroughly embarrassing. Uh, and that was the one where they just came back home, right? Yeah, that was a Sunday game, I think yes, it, it was. was. Yeah. And, you know, they had just come off the win against Minnesota, if I'm correct. Was that that game? Uh, and, you know, they were shorthanded, if I'm correct, without the Air Fox. They had the team meeting. Uh, earlier, you know, that week before and everything, uh, after the Denver loss, and then bam, yeah, we got smacked up at home. Uh huh. So, yeah, bad matchup, <laughs> bad matchup. But it's hard to beat a team five times in a row, Whitey. Is, I is mean, it? you're like, is it? We're not flipping a coin though. That's the thing, you know, right. <laughs> where you're playing a team that's already shown that in some ways they got your number. So yeah, I'd like to think that. I'm just, I'm not sure that's true. Sounds good, but no, is you, it true? It, it, uh, if they got your number, they got your number. I'm trying to hype myself up. I know. Here. Play I know. along with me, please. <laughs> That's one of those things you hear a lot in the NFL playoffs. Like if a team has beaten somebody twice and yeah. then they got to play them in the playoffs, people say, well, it's hard to beat a team three times. And I looked it up. It's like, it's really not. Really not, <laughs> right? If, if you got their number, it yeah. kicked their butt. That's, it is yeah. what it is. Yeah. 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 So um, the most interesting thing about tonight is going to be to see how the Kings – come out with either a more effective offense or they find some sort of change up yeah. or plan B for their offense. Well, and that's the problem, man. You're talking about an elite defensive team here Yeah, in the Pelicans. You know, when you look at their numbers, uh, sixth in the d defensive rating, third in steals, sixth in deflections. And so this team is elite. They're long and athletic. And I, I think this is one of those games where your offense has to be precise on point, can't over-penetrate, can't get into a one-on-one -on -one battle, can't try to go into your bag, the spray threes. I want to see multiple paint touches to get this Pelicans team in rotation a lot. And so uh, your offense got to be on point tonight, no doubt. Mm -hmm. I think that perhaps when we say, oh, Domas has to do more, you know, if if he continually has players collapsing on him defensively like he's had, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, it's not – reasonable in my opinion to expect him to somehow fight through that force his way through yeah yeah kick but it out then. the huh. kings just have to find some other way to counter but well domos needs to be better if he's got three guys on him that's that you know well you got to force it that's probably not the best best plan yeah and, and you're right but and this is something i said yesterday what about the repost what about collapsing the defense they come in triple kick it back out then get it back to him you know i, I feel mm -hmm. like too many times it's either you know, Domas shoots it, or when he does pass it out, they're shooting it instead of, you know, really working it to him and, and giving it to him multiple times out there. What did you think of what Gilbert Arenas had to say about the Kings and their fans? And what was uh, he really guy. saying? We're right back with that. Drive Guy, Sackdown Sports. Did you miss any part of our live local shows? Don't worry. You never have to miss them again. Check out SackdownSports.com and search our podcast page and play our shows when you want.
The Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross, Styles and Watkins, and The Drive Guys. Plus, other podcasts like Return of the Empire, Return of the Roar, The Stingers Up Podcast, and Golf to Go with Frank LaRosa. They're all available right now on SacktownSports.com. Lowe's knows pros need the right tools for every job. That's why we sell the largest in-store selection of Klein tools anywhere. Find new items like the self-leveling green laser level for just $159.98. Plus, shop the Connect Pass-Through Socket Set for $49.98, which you can only find at Lowe's. Shop Klein tools in-store and online today. Because Lowe's knows tools. Lowe's knows pros. What's keeping you from learning the language you've always wanted to speak? Too hard. Takes too long. Not with Babbel. Babbel's interactive lessons, podcasts, games, and more make learning fun. Fun isn't hard. Right. And in 10 minutes a day, Babbel's bite-sized lessons are designed to get you having real conversations in as little as three weeks. That's not long. It's not hard. It's It's perfect. perfect. It starts here. Go to Babbel.com to try for free. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Babbel.com. The Drive Guys, live and local, every afternoon, Monday through Friday on Sacktown Sports. Well, Drapes, you hear it looks like um, the feds have investigated the uh, Otani situation. I did see that. Company line here, the official word is, looks like... Shohei Son knew nothing about it. Nothing. And he's in the clear. And it's funny because a lot of people are having a hard time believing that. Yeah, that's a lot of money to be moving and not to know anything about it. And, you know, some people have raised, you know, well, if you're a bookie and all this money is coming in from this guy who, you know, mm-hmm. who, like it has to be, you know, like where's this guy getting this money from? Right. You know, it, right. It's, and so. Yeah, it's uh, but this guy's a cash cow, man. Like Major League Baseball was. I can see how baseball would want to protect him. I have a hard time imagining that the feds. I don't think they'd care. You know, they went after Barry Bonds. They yeah, that's true. Guys for different yeah. reasons, but I can't imagine. We'll see where the investigation goes, but I don't think the feds would have any interest in. Oh, it's Shohei Otani. We got to protect him. Yeah, uh, you're right about that. And and the feds, you know, a, a lot of times when they do bring charges or have something. It's because they got real evidence. Like, yeah. So maybe they, you know, they can't connect the dots on this, but it, it does seem kind of fishy to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Keep an eye on that. Have you been watching any baseball? A, a little bit. Not, baseball? Not, not a whole no lot. Baseball coming here next year. And... Yeah. Not a, hey, the A's got a chance to win another series, uh, two straight series. Ever since the announcement <laughs> that they were coming to Sacramento, they've been on fire uh, since last week. And so shout out to them, man. They're, Winning a couple of games, uh-huh. you know. Giants, meanwhile, reeling a little bit, struggling a little bit. So. Did you see Philly's new City Connect uniforms are going to be no. wearing? They came out last week. I have to show you. Yeah, you got. They're show. they're blue, and they have like gothic lettering Philly across the front. That. Uh, blue pants, blue tops, blue caps with I think the Liberty Bell, uh, like old school blue Philly, like you know back Mike Schmidt uh, days. Uh, Philly. I don't know. It's a. It's kind of a odd shade of blue it's not red he's just bringing it up oh almost like a turquoise yeah i don't like that 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 that, that doesn't say philly at all i didn't think so that that says what you're not connecting with i don't know what you're connecting with but it's not philly baseball history no that's that's pretty bad there's no red in there that's not even a real blue right uh, in there yeah that that, you know that looks like the marlins maybe or Uh somebody Uh like that not not the phillies I was wondering what you thought of that. Nah. The Giants this week, I think it was two nights ago, they were supposed to wear their throwback, or not their throwbacks, their City Connect, mm-hmm. which are orange, but they couldn't because, you know, Fanatics is doing the uniforms this yeah. year, and they didn't send them out in time. They're behind in the production. What? Yeah, it's uh. real fiasco you know, with these uh, uniforms, which players are sliding, and then they're tearing. Yeah. It's like they yeah. ordered them off Etsy or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> Somebody in, the yeah. ba- in their basement with a, a a needle and thread just trying yeah. to put them together. Yeah. You know? It's not a not a good look. Yeah. But uh, anyway, yeah, we're still uh, anxiously awaiting the A's here next year. As for tonight, yeah, Gilbert Arenas had some interesting things to say about who's going to emerge from the play-in to actually make the playoff. What in the world is he talking about? That guy, sometimes people have 
too much of an outlet. And Gilbert Arenas is making a name. Fantastic basketball player. I, I like watching. Ahead of his time. Yeah. I mean, I, yes. Can you imagine him in today's game? Oh, he'd be cooking. Yeah. But yeah. he's saying things now that's just trying to go viral. Everything uh-huh. he says, trying to piss somebody off. Yeah. On his podcast, Gil's Arena, he said, Golden State and the Lakers are about to be in the playoffs. Uh, them other two teams that got no fan base, get out of here. We don't want to see you. That's TV. You'd rather have Lakers and Warriors than the Pelicans. Pelicans in Sacramento are five or six games. Nobody's watching those games, says Gilbert Arenas. He says uh, no fan base here for the Pelicans or for the Kings. Hold on, James. Hold on for a second. Let me get this thought out, James. Uh, Let me get this thought out, big fella. Regarding Gilbert Arenas, this is a a small-minded view of things. I can go back 10, 15 years ago. The Warriors weren't the Warriors. Right. Like the Milwaukee Bucks before Giannis weren't the Milwaukee Bucks. So what is he talking about? And we know the Kings have a big fan base. We know last year they were league pass team of the year. They were the mo- one of the most exciting teams of the year. So what is and he talking the, about? Yeah, the Warriors and the Kings had really good ratings last yes, year. Yes, yes. There was a reason why all those games we're on ABC each weekend. You know, uh-huh. it wasn't on NBA TV or it wasn't on, you know, some of these alternate That's channels. why the Warriors and Kings played 14 times in the first right, two weeks right. of the season. This, this is a, a guy with a, a big platform and a big microphone that doesn't know what the heck he's talking about. Do you think maybe he's saying the NBA won't let those teams in? They will let the Warriors and Lakers in because they're bigger market teams? I heard it. It didn't sound like that's what he meant. Yeah, it, I, I didn't. Th- I heard it too. I didn't think that's what he meant, but I would imagine, from a broadcast partner's standpoint, ESPN, TNT, having the Lakers or Warriors in there, yes, makes more sense. We know that, and and I think the league is is fretting, and these networks are fretting a Lakers Warriors nine ten matchup because one of them is out. Yeah. After that, you know, you only get them for one game. And so uh, I I wouldn't be surprised if somebody in the league is like, man, I hope we get to see, you know, if I'm being completely honest and why why wouldn't I be, that's one of the things that worries me about a potential nine, 10 game Kings and Lakers or Kings and Warriors. I don't know. If you could count on getting a fair whistle. No, no, you can't do that, White. You can't already lay that out there. I'm being honest. We ain't even uh, uh, finished the regular season, and you're already setting this up for the conspiracy theory. I'm just telling you, that's how I feel. It worries me. You you know what you're doing. You're inner Phil Jackson. (laughs) You know how Phil Jackson uh, used to talk about and then try to influence the referees so that next game, you know, they get that's I see what you're doing. That's that reverse psychology. Yeah, there's no way they would give Sacramento a fair whistle next week. We start beating that drum. Maybe (laughs) Scott Foster and the boys hear that and say, you know what? I'm going to prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give De'Aaron Fox 12 free throws tonight, Mm -hmm. 15 free throws tonight. (sighs) Remember game six. It's all I'm saying. We'll never get over it. Those of us who remember against the Lakers. I know it's a terrible way to think, but I can't help but worry about it. James, what do you got? That's right. What do you? Changing it up. Oh, I get the fresh popcorn? Oh, oh, the chips. Oh, the nacho chips. chips. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, check that out right there. (laughs) Popcorn machine broken? Oh, all right, all right. right. Uh, Appreciate (laughs) you, man. You're happy with the change. No, I know. (laughs) (laughs) I I tell you, the the popcorn in the bucket, that's fresh. That's why I like that. Victory nachos. Yes. Right, right. Victory nachos tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tomorrow all right chips tonight okay i can rock with that yeah thank you james yeah thank, thank you. you james yeah because right now let's face it the chips chips are down the chi- oh visual aid right that's there when the we need to bring them back up rise right? up <laughs> turn this thing around uh tonight gilbert arenas um wonderful talent uh funny guy doesn't know what he's talking about has no idea has no <laughs> just just yapping and you know, that's not even the most controversial thing right. he said, too. Usually, but now he's coming after our city, our team. I, I can't no let him fly with that's that. That's just factually wrong. When <laughs> we come back, it's not about the emotion. It's about the execution tonight for the Kings. Drive guys on Sacked Out Sports. The Sacramento Kings play here. He's got 
the triple. Sacramento takes the lead. Outstanding ball movement by Sacramento. Every triple, every jam, every Kings win. Sabonis with the jam over the Joker. He's got the three-point shot. Get your Kings fix all season long. Right here on your home of the Sacramento Kings. Here's a steal by Fox. The breakaway. He's got the rip with the left hand. Sacktown Sports and SacktownSports.com. Hey, it's Carmichael Day for my good friends at American Energy. Now, I've told you this before, but this is what we call extending a good deal. Right now, American Energy Heat and Air is offering an HVAC diagnostic for $99. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Never mind. They're offering it free. It's a $99 value, but you get it for zero. Let the American Energy team test your system connections and all the moving parts of that system to ensure that it's functioning properly. Now, this is a limited time offer. Call today to schedule your appointment at 916-520-9990. Speak to the company that has an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau that's been making the greater Sacramento area proud since 1981. 916-520-9990 916-520-9990 or AmericanEnergyAir.com. Tell them Carmichael Dave sent you. Call 916-520-9990 now. Hi, everyone. It's Emron Pilati, host of the True Sports Card Show here on Sacktown Sports 1140 every Saturday at 10 a.m. Would you like a chance to meet Ricky Henderson, Dennis Rodman, Johnny Manziel, Randy Johnson, Frank Thomas, Vlad Guerrero Sr., Dave Stewart, and our favorite Malik Monk and meet over 90 sports card dealers all in one weekend this is your chance to do it on may 17th through the 19th at the roseville fairgrounds at the sacramento autograph expo you can get all the information about the show on our website at sacautographexpo.com that's sacautographexpo.com it's coach doug christie here to remind you if you want a deal that's a slam dunk go see the winning team at folsom lake ford folsom lake ford is your truck headquarters with all your american-made favorites like america's best-selling f-series f-150s and super duties or spacious new explorers and expeditions plus a huge selection of broncos and bronco sports all in stock now at folsom lake ford in the folsom auto mall you can buy any new Ford with zero down on approved credit, save big with low interest finance rates, and Folsom Lake Ford always pays top dollar for your trade. Check out the huge selection of inventory online at FolsomLakeFord.com or stop by the dealership to see their most recent arrivals. Looking for something special? Give them a call and tell them Doug Christie sent you. They'll help you out. Hurry to Folsom Lake Ford in the Folsom Auto Mall, your trusted dealer, my trusted dealer for over 35 years and counting. When I want to stretch out after a long day, my sofa needs to be comfortable, but it also needs to look attractive and inviting when guests come to visit. I am Frank LaRosa with a word about Naturewood Home Furnishings. We spend so much time on our living room sofas that we forget they're a focal point and a hint to our decorating tastes. Right now, during Naturewood Home Furnishings sofa sale, you can save on every sofa, including gallery-exclusive custom-ordered flex steel furniture. Whether you're interested in a new sofa, sectional, or recliner, you can choose from hundreds of colors and fabrics. Nobody has more styles and choices than Naturewood Home Furnishings. And when it comes right down to it, it's all about choices and always about quality. Shop Naturewood for the look you love at a price you'll love even more. Visit Naturewood Home Furnishings right now for this remarkable sofa sale. Off Highway 50 at Hazel, look for the water wheel. Golf to Go is brought to you by the Hagen Oaks Golf Super Shop. Here's Frank LaRosa. Everywhere you look, someone is always telling you how to get more fit. While we may feel like we're fit, we can all get fitter. Maybe you have a favorite pair of jeans that don't fit anymore, or maybe you just want to lower your blood pressure a bit. Here are a few suggestions. Walk. Walk more. Walk more rounds. Walk to work. Walk to the store. Walk the dog, but walk. Strengthening the most important muscles in the golf swing, your glutes. Even Tiger couldn't fire his. Buy a foam roller and knead the muscles of your body three times a week, especially your hips. You can do this while you watch television. Eat more vegetables and potato chips and carrot cake don't count. Stabilize the muscles of your core by raking leaves or sweeping floors and eliminate soda, especially the ones with artificial sweeteners. Maybe you'll be able to take a little bigger turn. Maybe you won't get tired around the 15th hole. Either way, you're going to be much happier with yourself. That's your golf to go. I'm Frank LaRosa.
on the chat from the end. Let's be 100% real. Golden State and the load managers aren't going anywhere, <laughs> even if they manage to get out of the play-in. That's I know a couple sweet. days ago you disagreed with that as far as the Lakers. You thought they had a shot. You oh, I, a shot. I really do. I, I, I think outside of Denver, pretty much almost everybody has a shot to go deep, make it to the Western Conference Finals. And if Malik comes back, I think the Kings have a shot, too. I wish we had Kevin Herter, but, yeah, I think the Lakers can make some noise. I think they can beat OKC. I think they can beat Minnesota, yes. Family Slagle says, sorry, Whitey, I'm looking at the Nuggets in a seven-game series. You don't need to apologize for that. That would be tremendous. What, us taking uh, on the uh, – Yeah, in a seven-game series? That, that means you made it in. Yeah. I'll, I'll take it. I'm, I'm okay with that. And, you know, if we lose, okay, we lose. But at least, you know, that's back-to-back playoff appearances for the kings think about it like this whitey too i've been thinking about it all year with this with this plan situation we went 16 straight seasons without a postseason birth we ended the drought are we starting a new one like basically this would be a start the start of a new one and so if you don't make it to the playoffs uh, so you know what i mean like uh-huh. so there's a you know it, it's hard to think of a, a scenario where it's an, a successful season or an okay season if you don't get into the main draw, the main tournament. Everybody loves the play-in, and I heard Chris today with Styles and Watkins, and Chris was talking about how uh, he's not crazy about it, and he said that Sam Amick has, a, you know, they have one of the players' polls coming up mm-hmm. soon in the athletic. It's not out yet, but Sam today said some of the players aren't crazy about the play-in. And when you think about it, yeah, it's a lot of fun, but if you're seven or you're eight – like it's you're like, oh, I'm yeah. in. Yeah, I played 82 yes. games. I should be yes. in, right? Yes, <laughs> you're right about that, man. <laughs> Seriously, if you're one of these two teams, yeah, two teams we're looking at now, you know, six and eight, uh, Pelicans and Kings. You're like, we played 82 games, uh huh, and we we're seven, and we've and earned it, and we're seven. It. How, still how are they it? getting an opportunity? Yeah, I get it. I get it. But That's fans love it. it is, you know, it. yeah, yeah. You don't like it, then you got to finish six, which the Kings can still do if they win tonight. Uh, I said this earlier. Are you with me on this? I think tonight is not so much about intensity. The intensity has to be there, but more important than that tonight to me is the Kings have to execute because they have such a small margin for error. No, I'm with you. And, and I go back to you know what I said last segment about the offense has to be on point. Crisp. Crisp. Yeah. Can't be the over-penetration. Can't be, you know, uh, t- dribbling into traffic. Can't try to challenge Valanchunas if it ain't there. Like, you got to be connected offensively. This has to be your best kind of offense. And then the same thing defensively, too. You got to be locked in. And so it's. It, I, I don't think it's all about effort or intensity, like you were saying, because I thought the effort was there the other night against OKC. I did, too. They just didn't execute properly and didn't knock down shots. Like, tonight, everything has to be on point. If Mike Brown wanted to do anything differently, what options would he have? And I'm not saying he will. He may not. Maybe he feels like, no, we're going to stick with what we're doing and just do it better. But if he did, if he and his coaches were looking at, boy, what is there anything we could do different? What would you even see as options? Let me start with this. I'm not, I'm, we're All just right. falling. <laughs> ah, would, ah. as a starter, if you had Trey as a starter, would you even look at that? Would that accomplish anything? I don't think so. And I, I, I don't. I'm with you tonight. I thought about. It. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but no, yeah, I, I, I just don't think so because first of all, you're 80 games into the season, and now you're doing this. Guys are comfortable in their roles. I would do what he's been doing. If HB doesn't have yeah. it going, yeah. All right, I'm riding Trey Lyles more. I wouldn't change the starting lineup, mm-hmm. but I think I would have a short leash for some guys tonight. Yeah, I thought Frankie had a good point. The thing is, no matter what fans think of HB. He is capable of doing things that you need, yeah. and you have to give him the chance to show that maybe tonight or tomorrow night that he's going to give that to you. you exactly. Give him that opportunity. You, you got to give him the opportunity. I, I mean, we did get some good news that Keegan Murray is going right. to play That's, tonight. Yeah. yeah, he is available. Javale McGee listed as questionable with an illness uh, for for the Pelicans. No Brandon Ingram. No Larry Nance Jr. Uh, Cody Zeller available. Najee Marshall questionable with that left shoulder contusion still but no i i think when it comes to hb and, and i think mike has done you know a, a fantastic job and all right if you're not cooking and we know mm-hmm. mike brown if you got it going on he'll rock with you he if you don't because he didn't shoot the ball right 
the last game? It, didn't, didn't is, that, is that what it was? I, I think I, that was might have been part of it. Obviously, he wasn't playing as well as he could play, wasn't playing great, but I think he was passing up some shots, yeah. which, you know, if, with Mike. Right. What's interesting yeah. about Harrison Barnes' last game, he took 10 free throws, Whitey. So he was being aggressive. He just wasn't not, he was one of eight from the field. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where, you know, uh, if, if he hits two or three more shots, then he has, you know, a pretty interesting game, but his shots didn't fall. And so I, I just wonder, man, like at this point of the season, because guys have not been consistent, I'll talk about Harrison Barnes, Chris Duarte, you know, and Mike has said it too. Other than Keegan, Fox and Sabonis, everybody else is on a trial by, you know, every night is a trial for them. Yeah, it's the chicken or the egg thing. Yeah. It's like, well, uh, you got to play more consistently to play more. Well, I can't play more consistently unless I play more. Play more, yeah. unless you get the consistent yeah. minutes. Yeah. 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 I do think that has been a struggle for some guys this season. I think they haven't been allowed to play through their mistakes and their struggles uh, because everything has been so heightened here in the Western Conference this season. What do you think of the way Colby's been playing since he started? He's been solid. He's been okay. I'm not going to, you know, etch him into Springfield or or he's not going to be at the Hall of uh, you know, the All-Star game next year in Sa uh, San Francisco. Can we put his name up at Hartford right. Palace at least? <laughs> yeah, he might be, a, you know, get get a, uh, a brick outside Golden 1 or something like that. We might be able to give him. But he's been good. He's been – but, you know, I, I look at late in the game against OKC – uh, the other day, you know, and, and we had Brendan on uh, earlier, like the lack of experience, you know, at times on the floor with our guys, when you have Keon, when you have Colby out there, you know, and they're doing a fantastic job, but experience matters, man. It, yeah. it really does. Keon had the play where they drove and they were down five and then he tried to shovel it to Doma. So right. It was too hard. And people remember that play. But to me, the play that was, oh my goodness, is when he came down, uh, on the break, and he jumped in the air at the foul line and had nowhere to go and threw the ball. Yeah. It's like, oh, uh, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. That, like you say, that's like, well, that's an, an experience. An experience. I mean, and you're relying on guys that you did not think would even be in the rotation this year. Kobe Jones, Keon Ellis, and, you know, Davion's played it extremely well, but, you know, he was buried at one point earlier this season. And so we go back to the roster that we talked about last segment, segment or two segments ago. This team has some holes when it comes to the roster. Colby reminds me of one of those guys who would be on Utah or on Denver, even. And I know Denver is really, uh, you know, they're the defending champs, mm -hmm. but a rookie who they'd bring in and they'd give him regular minutes. And by the end of the year, he'd be like, man, that guy's solid. Christian Brown. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, look at him now. He's a second year player. And Peyton Watson was yes, a rookie, you know, exactly. like those guys. And so, you know, I, I don't know about, you know, our rookies. Uh, I mean, but we also got to remember, the, you know, second round pick we're uh -huh. talking about, you know, undrafted players we're talking about. It's not like these guys are late first rounders or, you know, lottery picks that, you know what, they're going to come in. Yes. And let's let's also, you know, think about it, too. This Sacramento Kings team at the position that we're talking about those guys, they were actually pretty deep coming into the season, right? Yeah. yeah. Too many so. guys. Yeah. By the way, you mentioned uh, we we're just joking about putting somebody's name on a brick. Did you hear what's going on with the Giants over that? The San Francisco Giants? Yeah, I, I heard. Oh, they, my goodness. Re refresh. They were going yeah. to take so out when they, the – When they built the park, yeah. some people bought these bricks, and then, you know, you'd have it um, engraved for – some a yeah. man or someone like someone who's no longer with us, and then they decided they're going to move move the, them that move that area. Uh, yeah, so they they're they're moving all the bricks, and they're not where people go into the the stadium, and people are really mad because they paid for yeah. that. Did 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 they reverse course on that or no? Because I I thought I was reading that uh, public outcry. That. Yeah, you know, may had them read that. Yeah, 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 public outcry. Uh, combined with the possibility of, you know, legal action, I can see how maybe they would have reconsidered right, right. that. Because right. like, you donate Hello, because I paid, for I paid for this spot, you know, right here. No, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Oh, uh, we've got Antonio Daniels yeah. coming up top of the hour, All right? right? Yes. I, I got some news regarding Antonio Daniels. He's not calling the game, but he is going to come over early, be in person with us because he's going to go buy his son a De'Aaron Fox jersey. How about that, right? This is the biggest game of the year, and AD's out here buying the enemy's uh, 
jersey. I like it. I you like being it. the type of guy you are, you're probably going to get it for him as a way of thanking him for coming on our show. Maybe even getting him signed for him. You know, that's the kind of guy I am out here. Heck no. He's the enemy tonight. He's the enemy. Shoot. He better go to Walmart or Dick's Sporting Goods or something. You ain't getting no authentic jersey here. Get him out of here. When we come back, what to do the Kings need to do tonight? It's simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. Three things they have to do tonight. Next, Drive Guys, Sacktown Sports. On the move? Got somewhere to be? Take Sacramento Kings basketball with you. The Sacktown Sports app will let you stay connected to your passion. Never miss a moment of Sacramento Kings basketball with the Sacktown Sports app. Sacramento weather is brought to you by Bonnie. I'm meteorologist Heather Waldman in the KCRA3 Weather Center. Comfortable this evening. Temperatures on their way down into the low 50s for Thursday morning. It'll be a warm afternoon. Highs in the low 80s. Plenty of sun and light winds. Get the latest forecast on the KCRA News and the KCRA app. Once upon a time, you could get a heater tune-up or an air conditioner tune-up for just $59. Or both for $89. Not too hot, not too cold. Just right. I thought you were going to read me a bedtime story. Shh, go to sleep now. <gasps> Bonnie.com. License 696. Three five five. Seems like all this artificial intelligence stuff stirs up the age-old debate of man versus machine. Hi, it's Dan from the Good Feet Store, and let me ask you, would you let a robot cut your hair? Would you rely on an app to teach a kid to ride a two-wheeler? Let's face it, some things require the human touch. People come to us seeking a solution to foot, leg, and back pain after trying all kinds of things recommended by in-store machines or website blurbs. An impersonal, generic approach to solving a problem that's unique to you. No wonder they usually don't work. At the Good Feet Store, you'll meet with an art support specialist who will take the time to learn about your needs, your feet, your lifestyle, and then fit you from over 300 models and sizes of art supports designed for pain relief, better balance, and more comfort. See what we can do for you with a free fitting. Just stop in or schedule an appointment. With over 200 stores, there's likely one near you. Find yours at goodfeet.com. Everybody needs good feet. Don't pay retail for your diamond engagement ring or gift. Come to cleanorigin.com, founded by a family of leaders in the diamond industry for more than a century. We're experts in ecologically friendly lab-grown diamonds because that's all we do. Come clean with Clean Origin, the only diamond jewelers who give you a 100-day, no-questions-asked return on your purchase. Head to cleanorigin.com or one of our retail stores and mention code RADIO10 to receive 10% off. That's cleanorigin.com, code RADIO10. In business, service is everything. Cintas delivers what you need to better serve your customers. Whether it's freshly laundered work apparel for almost any job imaginable, tested and inspected fire protection systems, first aid and safety supplies, on-site AED training, or mops and restroom products stocked and ready when you need them. Better work days happen together. So visit Cintas.com. Oh, I'm ready! And get ready for the work day. Welcome to a brighter future with Aztec Solar, serving Sacramento since 1980. Everyone knows that solar saves money. How much? The answer is a few clicks away. Visit yourpowersavings.com. It's fast, easy, and reliable, giving you instant insight into your potential savings. I used to pay $400 a month to the power company, and that $400 a month added up to $48,000 over the past 10 years. That all changed when I switched to solar with Aztec Solar. Now it's your turn to stop overpaying for electricity. Calculate your solar savings right now at yourpowersavings.com. And Aztec Solar will email or text you how much you'll save every month. Plus, we've got an exclusive offer for you. Get your solar electrical system for just $9,995 cash price after incentives. Don't wait. This deal won't last forever. Visit yourpowersavings.com today and take the first step towards energy independence with Aztec Solar. Capital Casino has been serving the greater Sacramento area in the same convenient downtown location for over 20 years with plenty of close-by, well-lit parking monitored by security staff and offering the most variety of table games in the region in a safe and friendly environment. Best food, best service, and the best action – that's Capital Casino. For more information on tournaments and gaming, check out their website at capital-casino.com. And please remember to gamble responsibly. What a hand.
Thanks, Cal Draper, for setting me straight on that Giants uh, brick controversy. Oh, did you look the that up? The original plan was, yeah, they were replacing the commemorative bricks, which were laid next to the McCovey statue beyond right field. They were gonna, they were gonna get, get rid of the bricks, and they were gonna have a digital kiosk right. <laughs> that would display the messages That's awful. originally on the bricks. So, like, we'll never forget you, Grandpa. And right, the brick right. There would be, oh, it's on the digital kiosk. Let me press the button. So, anyway, uh, following outcry from fans, the Giants quickly reverse course on uh, that plan. Good, so, it, yeah. it, right? But man, it, it has been an off season of like blunders from them. You know, <laughs> getting rid of Rennell, like to that. Like, this is a, 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 a TED talk on what not to do when you run a uh, franchise. My yeah, gosh. yeah. So, uh, hmm. Uh, good luck to the Giants uh, there. They actually won yesterday, right? So no, they did. They got to win. A rough start. Let me let me say something real quick. Yeah, you know, because I was just thinking about it. I'm golfing tomorrow, and I'm sitting here. I got my second screen going on. I'm watching the Masters, and I'm golfing with my guy Dan. And uh, I'm gonna let you guys know how many Kirkland golf balls I see tomorrow. I don't okay. know why that popped into my head. <laughs> Not saying Dan is the guy that plays with Kirkland. Wink, huh. wink, nod, nod. Ooh. But uh, I'll let you guys know uh, how many Kirklands uh, I see out there on the course. I'm excited, bro. You, you say something now at this point when someone you're playing with has a Kirkland? Do you comment? No, I can't say anything. Like I, 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 I <laughs> might even with... say, "Oh, Kirkland, huh?" Right. <laughs> That's how's not that like Kirk, a Seinfeld how's that Kirkland treat? <laughs> I you. know. I mean, Dan and I are close enough now. Where I might say, bro, your game is too good for Kirkland. What are you doing, ah, man? Like, yeah. uh, you know, at, at least get a Strix on or something like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Kirkland. So uh, I might say something tomorrow. So Maybe it's a tremendous ball. We were going to do our tests, but we haven't done those. Yet. We haven't. Yeah, Kirkland we tests. haven't. Yeah. That's what we need to go out to Hagen Oaks. Yeah. And just hit a bunch of balls and see how to, the flight and everything. <laughs> You know, the launch monitor and the angle yeah. and everything. They yeah. got that Swedish military technology stuff out there. Yes. They can tell you everything. Yes. They Spin can rate tell you everything, you know. Yeah. And so uh, I'm actually in the, in the market for some new golf balls. And so Kirkland really? might be on the, uh, yeah. I'm Tommy, they may not even go let y'all bring them all to the course. I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> you might as well play with some rocks. You know, some pebbles, some stone. They have a security thing you got to go through. Right. They confiscate everybody. What are you doing? Just check for Kirkland. <laughs> Can you imagine? You know how many Kirkland you're good? <laughs> like an yeah. x-ray machine. And you got to be in your pocket. And got yeah. like 20 of them whoop, in your pocket. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> uh, we oh, found man. him, sir. Sorry, yeah. man. Sorry. Here you go. Three things the Kings need to do tonight. If, that, if I speak of the team, it's like, these are the three All things right. you have to do. No, hold on. Yeah. Whitey's wish list, right? Uh, what yeah, to that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. This would be my wish list for tonight. Um, and it's very simple and it's very direct. And I don't think this is going to surprise anybody. You got to make shots, you got to diversify the offense, and you have to rebound. And you have to do those three things. It's like you must do those three things to win tonight. I think, yeah, you don't do any no, one of those. No, it's like, it, right, all right, and, playing time. And I agree at the top of your list, make shots. Because if you're making shots against this, team, this guy, Kevin John in yeah, the building, guy. second best dressed dude in sports media around here. <laughs> hey, look okay. good, bro. Drape yeah. strip, my yeah. guy. Hey, love you, Kevin. That's a good dude right there. <laughs> Great guy. Great yeah, guy. I know. Kevin. I know. Love Kevin. I mean, I go that was my wish. That was Whitey's wish. Oh, that's Whitey's wish. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Jay. So, um, but it, you have you to do be. those three. I was quick. Like, you do one of these or two of these. Yeah. I <laughs> listen to Jay. Uh, but here's the thing, and you're right, Whitey. If you're making shots against this team, that's to me that signals other things are happening. Uh huh. It's not just right. you're hitting contested threes. No, you're breaking down their defense to get good looks. And so, no, I'm with you on that. You know. And, and the rebounding situation, too. They've owned you on the glass uh, this season. And so uh, I need somebody other than Domas to step up on the rebounding side of things, too. Yeah. I'm looking at 8 to 10 for Keegan Murray uh, to uh, it, happen. Yeah, I know you've talked to people about rebounding, and it's interesting the responses you get. Uh, I know Harold Presley told me one time, he said, you just have to have one guy or that's what he does. It's just, that's what he that's does his, in his mind yeah. is to get in the ball. Another people, coaches will tell you, and I think it applies to tonight, you've got to have as a team the gang rebounding mentality. Our guy Antonio Daniels just stepped up. How are you, sir? 
Dog, hold on, man. You uh, you ain't working tonight? Look at he all uh, casual in here. Got his and people on the YouTube. They can see him. Look at casual. You want to jump in right now? You want to stay with us for two blocks? Or, all right, come on. Stay. You want to stay with us for two blocks here, man? I appreciate you. What's going yeah, on, baby? Yeah, 13-year NBA veteran, Pell's TV analyst, uh, Antonio Daniels. Nice enough to join us. One of the uh, one of our favorite guests we've had here. We were just talking about how important it is, sir, for the Kings. They've got to rebound tonight, and the Pels, your Pels, have shoved them all over the place in the rebounding department. The Kings have to find a way to rebound tonight. You know, the thing is, the New Orleans Pelicans are one of the teams that can actually match and even surpass the physicality of the Sacramento Kings. Mm. So a lot of times, that's their advantage. Their advantage is Domas Sabonis. You know, how strong he is, how physical he is. You know, um, the physicality that he brings to the game. But the Pelicans can actually match that. And it's not a lot of teams. If you go through the Western Conference and you look at some of these teams, like obviously the Lakers can't. You know, you look at Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City can't. A lot of teams are – because the center position is different now. Yeah. Now it's almost like longer, leaner is different than bigger, Mm -hmm. you know, and Jonas is bigger. This has been a good matchup for him. Antonio, obviously you're an NBA vet. I look at physicality as something other than just size or strength. I look at it as a mindset. Talk about the physical mindset that you guys bring night in and night out. Well, you know, it's crazy. I was just talking to Reggie Miller a minute ago, who's doing the game. Oh, Reggie now? Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I I said, the the thing about this team is, (laughs) excuse me, you got a top five defense Mm -hmm. with no rim protection. Mm. And you know where that starts? That starts at the point of attack on the perimeter. Right. That's the physicality that you speak to. Right. A lot of times people equate physicality with paint presence. Yeah. yeah. Physicality starts on the perimeter too. Right. Right. Not getting pushed around, mm. you know, kind of setting the tone defensively. When you have guys that are really good point of attack defenders, now it kind of, I don't want to say it minimizes, but you don't need rim protection as much. When you think of, of rim protection and you're driving in the paint for the Pelicans, who are you looking back for? You're not looking back for Victor Wimanyama. You're not looking back for Chet Holmgren. You're not right. looking back for Rudy Gobert because you have guys like Herb Jones, Dyson Daniels, Najee Marshall, Jose Alvarado. Those guys are really good point of attack defenders. And that's for us. A lot of times that's where the physicality starts is on the perimeter. So Antonio Daniels with this. So you look at the way they defend on the perimeter. De'Aaron Fox has not shot the ball well against your team. You mentioned uh, Domas has a tough time matching the physicality. Is that the main reason why the Pels are 4 0s? Because this is a tough matchup for the Kings' two best yes. players. Yes. And, and the thing is, like, this league, and I'm not telling you guys something you don't know. This league is all about matchups. Styles make fights. Mm. You know, you can look at the triangle between the Los Angeles Lakers, the Denver Nuggets, and the Oklahoma City Thunder. One of them can't beat the other one. Right. The other one can't beat the other one. The other one can't beat the other one. So it's like, yeah, because it's all about it's all about matchups. And if you have a team that you are playing against that they have multiple guys to throw at your best players, then that's when you need someone else to step up. And that someone else, and this is that's why for me, Malik Muck is my sixth man of the year, mm-hmm. right? Because he's been that someone else that can offset. Darren Fox and Domas Sabonis having a subpar or mediocre night. So losing him, well, yes, that hurts. We've we've noticed. Yeah, we. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a different team (laughs) without Malik Monk uh, Monk out, and also his swagger, right? Uh, Yeah, just the just the the like he brings a different attitude to the Sacramento Kings team. That's not present when that that's not present when he's not there. And Antonio, the other thing that he brings, I know you played combo guard, you played point guard. He's a much better distributor yep. point guard Agreed. that we knew that anyone knew. He, and he says, I could always do it, but we didn't know that till he got here. So on our Sirius XM show today, we were talking about um, the top point guards heading into free agency this summer, mm. right? You look at Russell Westbrook and James Harden and Tyus Jones. Um, D'Angelo Russell has Russell, an option. Yeah. And then we threw Malik Monk in there. In the point guard category. Uh-huh. Right, in the point guard category. Even though for me, he's more of a 2-1, but think about it. In today's NBA, who is traditional right, anymore? You have, yeah. You, you know, traditional point guards are like traditional big men. Yep. They're dinosaurs. Now everybody is a lead guard. Mm. Lead guard means I can play both. CJ McCullum is a lead guard. lead guard. He's not a point guard. Right. Russell Westbrook is a lead guard. 
you know, the Chris Pauls and Tyus Joneses that you can probably count the amount of traditional point guards on your hands. On your hands. Right. Yep. Yeah, we were talking about that last week. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, you know, as this game is approaching here, you know, I, I said kind of jokingly, it's hard to beat a, time, a team five times in a season. <laughs> I will say this. Last time you guys were in here, you guys took joy in kicking our butts. Do you think uh, as a player, when you have a team's number, you walk into an arena super confident? Yes. And, and there are certain arenas, and I will be lying to you guys if I, if I told you I can explain it. I cannot. There are certain arenas, for whatever reason, that you feel better in, that you shoot the ball better in. And I'm speaking from experience here. I'm not I'm not speaking for an opinion from an opinion standpoint. Right. I'm freaking from experience. There are certain places that you feel more comfortable with. <clears throat> the last three times prior to the game a couple of days ago that Devin Booker played against the Pelicans, he had 162 points. <laughs> Is that coincidental? And that's against you guys. Right. With that when you have Herb defense, Jones, who's right. first team on defense, when you have a Jose Alvarado, when you have a Dyson Daniels, when you have really good defenders, like sometimes for whatever reason, again, it, it goes back to, to matchups. Some gyms, you just feel better shooting the ball in. It's just a comfort level that comes along with it. But you also don't want that comfort level to be too much. Right. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is – it's, it's tough to beat a team four times. It's like it's tough to sweep a team. And to beat a team five times is very, very difficult as well. Right. Now, we have to take a quick time out. For sure. Are you able to stay with us? Yeah, for sure. Got things, are you? Yeah. All right. Oh, thank yeah. you. And we appreciate you coming by. We could have just talked on the phone. So, thank you. For oh, that. man. I'm, I'm I'm here. The only thing I got to do here is uh, I got to get my little boy a De'Aaron Fox jersey. Need the employee? De oh, no. You got your idea. Oh, I get oh, it. I get it. Right, yeah. Oh, it. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm prepared. Yeah. <laughs> Born with Antonio Daniels coming up. Kings and the Pelicans, a big one tonight. It's a drive, guys, on Sackdown Sports. No team has owned the Kings more than the New Orleans Pelicans. Thursday at 7, the Kings look for their first win of the season against New Orleans. It's grabbed by Davion. Bullet pass to the corner. Keegan for three. Score the triple. What a super assist from Davion Mitchell. David Murray now has 14. It's game 80. The Kings and Pelicans. Thursday at 7 on Sacktown Sports. Syntec Premium Full Synthetic Motor Oil is formulated for today's engines. Available only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hey, it's Carmichael Dave inviting you to make the switch to electric this spring and save big with American Energy. Stay ahead of those spiking energy bills this summer with up to nine grand in rebates on a new ultra high efficiency comfort system. American Energy is providing huge rebates from SMUD as well as spring specials by installing one of many incredibly efficient AC options available to you right now. Get rid of those fluctuating gas bills in the winter and switch to year round all electric with American Energy. Let them perform a free in-home energy efficiency analysis and see where they can help you save for the warmer months ahead. These guys are the best. Been serving the greater Sacramento area since 1981. A-plus from the Better Business Bureau. Learn more by calling 916-520-9990. That's 916-520-9990. Call 916-520-9990 now. I was in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean when it happened. There was a sudden jolt and our submarine crashed on the seafloor. We were in total darkness. That's Dr. Dejana Figueroa, a marine biologist and STEM teacher, talking about a deep sea dive she'll never forget. It's funny, when I was a kid, I was afraid of the ocean. And there I was, two miles below the surface. But as a scientist, you prepare for that. Using our training and a little creativity, we fixed the sub and finished our experiments. The dive was just too important. Every dive gives us glimpses at things few people ever get to see. Blowing creatures, fiery undersea volcanoes. When we got back to the surface, I kissed the ground and called my mom, of course. But you know what? I wouldn't trade that dive for anything. Dr. Figueroa uses her passion for STEM to discover new things and make the world a better place. She can STEM, so can you. Check out She Can STEM for more stories and inspiration. 
a message from the Ad Council. Welcome to the April Adventure Sales Event at Kia Vacaville, where they're ushering a new season with unbeatable lease options for their 2024 lineup. As April blooms with possibilities, it's the perfect time to discover the thrill of driving a Kia, featuring the luxurious and versatile Kia Telluride. During April Adventures, Kia Vacaville is excited to unveil their top models with irresistible lease offers. Feel the exhilaration of the all-new Kia Sportage, blending captivating design with dynamic performance. Experience the impressive fuel efficiency of the Kia Niro, a hybrid wonder that stretches your adventures further. And don't miss out on the chance to boost your journeys with the luxurious comfort and practicality of the Kia Telluride. Available now at Kia Vacaville. Embrace the look of spring with their eco-friendly Kia hybrid options, tailored for those who seek efficiency without sacrificing style with the EV9 in stock. Kia Vacaville is your premier destination for electric excitement. Model availability, lease options, and features may vary. For more details, visit Kia Vacaville and embark on your April adventure today. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Drapes, Kyle Draper. As the proud sponsor of the Sacramento Kings Mop Crew, Alsco Uniforms offers certified hygienically clean lab coats, scrubs, bed linens, towels, floor mats, and an array of mops tailored for your healthcare facility. Our services include convenient delivery to your doorstep. Leading the way in healthcare laundry services in Northern California, discover why it pays to keep clean with Alsco uniforms. Go to Alsco.com to learn more. Again, that's ALSCO.com. From the Power Business Technology Toshiba Studios, KHTKAM Sacramento, KYMX HD2 Sacramento, the only station in Sacramento giving you local sports coverage from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Sacktown Sports. Masters tournament kicked off today. We're almost finished live from Augusta, Georgia, and we have an outright leader so far in the first round. Bryson DeChambeau leads everyone shooting a seven under in his round today. He's all done and through for the day, as is Scotty Scheffler, who currently sits second, all by his lonesome at six under. Two competitors are tied at four under, including Max Homa, who's through 13 holes on the day, while eight players are tied at two under. Tons of golfers. When I say tons, 18 golfers are tied at one under right now. Tony Finau, Patrick Cantley, Royal Mac Rory McElroy, Tommy Fleetwood, and the great Eldrick Tiger Woods, Drapes Guy, who's through 13 holes. Defending champ John Rahm, well, he's at one over on the day. Your Masters leaderboard standings are brought to you by Naturewood Home Furnishings, where it's all about choices and all about quality. Those are your master updates. Now more of the Drive Guys with A.D. Antonio Daniels. They do not know what Sacktown brings. When on the low, that's a Sacktown thing. Talking about us, it's a bounce out thing. The only station in Sacramento giving you local sports coverage from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Sacktown Sports. We talk a lot about must wins. Now, tonight, the Kings, if they want to have any chance to finish out of the play-in and in the top six, they have to win tonight against the New Orleans team. They, of course, haven't beaten all year. Hal Draper, Kevin Gleason, Antonio Daniels with us. Somebody on the uh, chat here, Antonio, says, oh, Curtis Six says, Antonio had one of the nastiest dunks ever in the playoffs against the Suns. That remember that all, Phoenix? Uh, I don't know. I do remember. I, I do remember I, I was on back in the day when they had the uh, Slam Magazine Slam of the Month, uh -huh. almost like Jet Beauty of the yeah, Week. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I, I three. Yeah. yeah, I was, I was, uh, I was in there on on Rodney Rogers. Oh, okay. And then the next time we actually played him, I tried it, and, and you can see my wrist is still messed yeah. up to this day. Oh no! But you hit it on the rim? No, he laid me down. Oh, he did. <laughs> he laid me out. Those days, those days are long gone. That's why when we see flagrant ones and flagrant right. twos now, I'm like, come on, man. Look, that's not a flagrant one. Wow. But yeah. What do you make of the way the officiating has changed since the All Star break? I mean, we had a game this week. Listen. The Bucks and the Celtics are two free two throws. Free throws. Come yeah, on, man. you Listen. like it or? Here's my thing. I, I don't mind it. The NBA and you both know this. The NBA sends out memos for everything. Yeah. Send the memo out. Right. Let the players know. You know what I mean? Let the players know. Okay, we don't like the way things are going. Guys scoring seventy. Guys scoring sixty. So what we're gonna do? After All-Star break, we are going to revisit the physicality of the game. Cool. Now, as a player, I know right. I can adjust accordingly. But when it just happens on the fly like right. that, just, yeah. that is a very, very tough ask. Because in calling these games, 
what I'm saying is everybody now is complaining because they feel like they're being fouled. And if you go back to prior to All-Star break, they are being they fouled. Yeah. yeah. They are. So it's not just the fact that it's a jump shooting league now. Now with such an inconsistency right. with the way that the the physicality that they're allowing. Yes. I, it's a, it's and from a, official to official, like, you know, there's too much of a gray area now on what is a foul and what isn't a foul. There's too like. much of a gray area on everything. Yeah. Like, realistically speaking, there's a gray <laughs> Travel, area. Of, right, right. Right. <laughs> Traveling, defensive three seconds. Yeah, yeah. What's a flagrant one? What's continuation? What constitutes a flag? It's a, it's a gray area on a lot of a lot different of things. things right now. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the great Antonio Daniels uh, joining us here as we get you ready for Pelicans versus the Sacramento Kings. You guys without B.I. tonight, how have you fared without him? And, uh, you know, what, what, what kind of impact is that? For me, everything is situational. Because uh, Sorry to interrupt. No. Because he gives us fits. For Brandon sure. Ingram, he killed. He get, we have nobody that can check him. And, and here's the thing. Everything is situational, you know, in, in this league. You know, you can look at the stat sheet. This is why watching the games is actually so much more important than watching highlights and looking at the stat sheet. Mm. Because you can look at the game and have nine turnovers and be like, oh, my gosh, they did a great job of taking care of the basketball. If eight of those nine turnovers come in the fourth quarter, mm. everything is situational, okay. right. right? So Brandon Ingram goes down at a time when the Pelicans – started their most difficult homestand of the season. Mm. That's the that's the difficulty. So it wasn't the fact that he went down. It's when he went down. It's all situational. So when he went down, you played Oklahoma City, Milwaukee, Boston, Phoenix, <laughs> Orlando, San Antonio. All at home. So when he comes back, which I think it may be against the Lakers, he may be coming Maybe. back soon. Uh -huh. yeah. Will the team be better or the way they had to deal with his absence once he's back. I mean, but the thing is, this has happened before. Like, this team has has been there before. Not as much this year. Remember, last year only played 44 games. Right. So last year, Zion only played 29 games. So this team is accustomed to different guys stepping up. Trey Murphy almost started as many games last year as Brandon Ingram did. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you're putting him in a position that he's not Got, comfortable yeah, in not familiar, because yeah. Zion's been down and B.I.'s been down before. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Zion, is he getting enough love this season? Like, you see him night in and night out. Well, tell me about Point this, Zion, this year. right? Listen, I, I said on our, on our yeah. Phoenix broadcast the other day, if you see him, you won't get a true appreciation of Zion until you see him play in person. Really? You won't until you say in prayer in person. And, and you guys can, can speak to this. You guys can attest to this. There are certain guys throughout the course of history, to me, guys that I played it with or against, the TV will never give them the justice that they deserve. Mm -hmm. You can sit here right now and say, oh, yeah, I know Shaquille O'Neal's big. I know he's dominant right. until you play against yeah, him. Yeah. Until, until you see how strong right. he is. Uh -huh. I mean, you know what? Go know. Us with the strength of right. DeMontis Sabonis. Right. I know LeBron James is big. Right. <laughs> but when you see that size move like that, right. I know Allen Iverson's quick. Right. Yeah. Until you try and check him in space. You know what I mean? So yeah. there are certain guys that TV doesn't give them justice. Zion is one of those guys for me. Like I hear people say all the time, all you have to do is fill in the blank. Right. And guard Cut it. off the left. Yeah. Or some right. Yeah. yeah. That's the same thing they said about Manu Ginobili. He's in the Hall of Fame. Mm. That's the same thing they used to say about Avery Johnson. His jersey's retired in San Antonio. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's. Can you think of a guy, and then this is a question I pose to both of you guys. Can you give, think of a guy throughout the history of the sport that is six foot four, six foot five, six five, six six, we'll say, with that size, that explosiveness, with that touch around the rim, mm. and is left handed like that? Right. No. Me neither. He's one of one. Right. Right. And there are certain guys that you have to take a bit of, well, take this guy's. Uh, body, a Rodney Rogers type right. body. Take a Vince Carter type explosive. Yeah, you know, take a Kyrie maybe, Irving yeah. type of. I feel yeah. like Kyrie Irving, Steph Curry, and Zion Williamson are the three best tough layup makers in today's NBA. You, you know include that. Zion in that. Mix. Listen, because everything with him goes viral because of his dunks. Yeah, right. when Kyle watched some of the English and some of the touch that he has to use around the rim to finish over guys that are longer than he is. When he was at Duke and we were all watching, trying to figure out what he was like, the closest I could come, and it's very inexact, was like, 
a Sean Kemp with more, you know, guard skills. I don't know. That was a but, close but see, But the game. thing is, also, Sean Kemp was like 6'10". Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, know I know. He's much bigger. Yeah, right. Yeah, and that, yeah. that's the part. And that's what I mean, though, because you have to take a little bit of this guy. Yeah. A little. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like God is just sitting up there in heaven. He's like, you know what, <laughs> young man? <laughs> you don't know it yet. But I'm going to give you just a little bit more and I'm giving everybody yeah. else. But is he bought into what you guys are doing? Because he said himself earlier this year or last year, he said, well, I'm That was at trying. the beginning of this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Year. Said, yeah I'm, I'm trying. Is it is it working? It's definitely working. Because now it's at that time, it's almost like you're trying to figure some things out with him, with CJ, and with B.I. Because remember, they haven't played a whole lot together. Right. Since CJ's gotten there, all three of those guys starting together – prior to this season, hasn't happened very often. So now you're trying to figure out a pecking order, right? If you think of successful big threes in the past, they don't work without a pecking order. You right. think about the Miami Heat, they didn't start winning. They didn't win back-to-back -back until Dwayne until Wade said, that, you know what, I am, willing to be, yeah. I am willing to be Robin. Mm -hmm. And then Chris Bosh said, you know what, LeBron, you be Batman. Uh, Dwayne Wade, you be Robin, and Chris Boss said, I'll be Alfred. Alfred, yeah. Right. They didn't win. <laughs> they didn't win until they chose to go right, down that road. Right. So I think in the beginning, it was more along the lines of them trying to figure some things out and Zion trying to buy into the figure out. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Antonio Daniels, before we let you go, man, obviously, uh, big game tonight. Uh, Kings got to win out. We're rooting for you guys to lose out. Just call it sure. like it is. Yeah, no, no I, I get it. You know, how difficult is this uh, final push for you guys? All on the road? Uh, no. You are, you no, got... but you also got to understand this is a better road team than they are at home. Yeah. Really? Which yeah. is wild. Yeah. Okay, you got about second. Uh, because yeah. this is a young team, yeah. right? And that's very rare for a young basketball team. Usually young basketball teams are much better at home and they struggle on the road. Right now, this team has set a franchise record for road wins. Mm. So you got tonight versus the Pelicans. You have tomorrow Warriors. versus Golden State, and then you have Sunday at versus home. the Lakers. Okay. okay. At yep. the Smoothie King. Yeah, at the Smoothie King Center. Yeah. So here's the thing. If you win these two, you wonder what the Lakers would do, depending on what else happens, because right, they right, may right. be locked into the 10th spot. Right. Yeah. 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 Can I ask you, as you talked about some of the players you've seen, played against, played with, how unique their talents are. Mm -hmm. You mentioned you're a Deer and Fox fan. How about his speed? Is that one of the things that people will talk about in the future of, boy, you know who's one of the fastest, absolute fastest was De'Aaron Fox? But, you know, the thing is, the thing about De'Aaron Fox that I love, there are certain players in this league, and I, this is why this is such a blessing of a job, because I feel like the best part outside of the relationships you develop is watching guys progress. There are certain players where you say, man, if this dude had a jump shot, he would be – like, think about how often yeah. do you hear that about Giannis? Yep. If he developed a 15-footer, he would be. And you know what De'Aaron Fox said? Whatever that fill-in-the-blank is, that's what I'm going to add to my game. Go and that's what he's that. done. Yeah. That's what he's done. And you see it on a night-to-night -night basis now, and you're seeing a completely different De'Aaron Fox now than we've seen in years past. He's been great in years past. But now I feel like he's gone from being great to being elite. And I think what made him elite is – his willingness, the time, the energy, and the effort that he put into that three-point shot. Mm -hmm. Because now you have to guard him at all three levels. Before, pick and rolls because of his speed. That you Let me go under and meet him on the other side. Right, let right. me dare him to shoot. Now you can't dare him to shoot anymore. And when you have a guy that has that type of jump shot, that type of in-between game with floaters and step backs and can get all the way to the rim and finish around the rim, you got a problem on your hands defensively. Is he at the top of your uh, whiteboard here defensively? Because you guys have yes. done a great No job question on about him. it. No, no. For, like for me, he's first. Yeah, first. He's yeah. first. No, no disrespect to Doma Sabonis, but De'Aaron Fox to me is the head of the snake. De'Aaron Fox to me is the, the engine for this team. If he's going and he's pushing the pace and he's making things happen, he's collapsing your defense and kicking out to Keegan Murray and kicking out to Harrison Barnes for threes, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. You are in trouble. Let me ask you this, AD. We started off our show, and this is the thing that bothers me about sports takes right now. And I'm 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 a go here, Whitey. I'm a, I'm a go here, Kings fans. I feel like too often we wake up the next morning, look at the box score, and say this guy needs to be better or that guy needs to be better. Harrison Barnes is 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 being you know uh, 
brought up now. We started our show, and I it's went on. I'm see like, him as a symbol of, the, of everything of, that's going uh, wrong. But and I'm like, we got more issues than Harrison Barnes. Domas has to be better. Seven shots against OKC, eight points. He has to be better. Keegan Murray has to be better. What do you make of uh, Harrison Barnes, I guess, and uh, what he gives well, this team and what he well, gives this team? Well, here's the First thing, Kyle, I'll tell you is there's no difference between the Kings fan base that you're talking oh. to and the other 29. <laughs> All right, okay. There's no difference. You guys got that too? Everybody what? has it. Everybody. If it's, not a, if it's not a player, if it's not a player, it's the coach. Yeah. It's his rotations. Man, he needs to play this guy more. He needs right. to play that guy yeah. more. Like, yeah. and, and realistically, what you see is if a team plays well, you praise the players, and the team starts to struggle, you criticize the coach. Then once you're done criticizing the coach, now you got to go down the list. Now you go. Right. And yeah. for me, that's why it's so important to actually watch the games. But this is a – we are in a, a numbers and stat-driven culture. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if you're not watching the games and you're simply look at – Stats, field goal percentage, effective field goal percentage, advanced numbers, and all this other kind of stuff. It, a lot of times, there are certain guys like you get there's a difference between being pessimistic and objective. Hmm. There's a difference in the two. Like, you what you just said was, was 100% spot on. Like, this guy needs to be better. This guy needs to be better. This guy needs yeah. to be better. You know what you didn't say? They need to get rid of this guy. They need to get rid right. of it, you know. And right. for me, Harrison Barnes, he does need to be better for this team, right. For the ultimate goal. Yes. For the ultimate goal. And there's nothing wrong with saying that whatsoever. But he also does a lot of things behind the scenes and even in between these four lines that won't show up on the stat sheet. Yeah. Like experience. You can't. How many guys on this? How many guys on this? Um, How many guys on this roster have a championship ring? Just him. No, JaVale McGee also. Excuse yeah. Me. Him and JaVale. Yeah. And, and, and that that's priceless. Yeah. That's prices. When you have guys that have been there before, you Luckily have guys. The coach that the, does too, but I know that yeah, wasn't. Yeah, but yeah, yeah player sure. wise. Yeah, for sure, but player wise. The thing yeah. is, the coach can. The coach ain't. The coach ain't shooting. The coach ain't. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. he ain't getting the team into offense. All he can do is make calls. Mm-hmm. That's it. I mean, I, I've I've always I've always I've always liked Harrison Barnes. Um, the thing is, as he gets older, a lot of people will base how he's playing simply on whether or not he's shooting the ball well or not. That's it. So if he's shooting the ball well, he's playing great. If he's not shooting the ball well, he's right, playing poor. Right. Do you have time for one more? One more what? Question? Yeah, I've I got time for whatever. Yeah, I got <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I know that uh, the Pelicans have had a lot of success going small. I mm-hmm. think in the last game, their last win, they did. But is that something they'd even need to do tonight against yes. the Kings, considering how they've uh, out-rebounded them? This well, it's, it, the thing of going small is not simply about – rebounding it's about playing to something your team is really good at Mm -hmm. you know like if you look at the versatility that this team has the pelicans they check a lot of boxes right i feel like teams that can win both ways where i don't know how many games this year that Jonas valentunas has won for this team with just his physicality he brings a automatic double team but then there are certain games like the game the other day against phoenix we played three minutes and 55 seconds you know, really? he had to, yeah, he had a senior day start. Oh, so like even before the first whistle right. happened, he was out there. He, he's okay with that. Game. He's good with that. That right. works for him. No, the thing is, but that's how it's been yeah. for him uh-huh. for the last probably since All Star break. Mm-hmm. I don't really? know how many times that, in the second half where he hasn't started the second half. They start Larry in the second half. But think about putting Zion at the five because now what you're doing is now it's not about. You guys, it's about compromising the other team's defense. Mm. So now you're asking Domas Sabonis to match up with Zion. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it flips the script. So what they did the other day versus the Phoenix Suns, they put Zion at five. Oh. And you said Nurkis because what teams are doing, everybody's doing the same thing. They're spying on Zion like a linebacker spies on Lamar Jackson. Mm. Right? They're whoever's guarding they the guy that they want to leave yeah. open, they're meeting him at the rim. Right. So you know what they say? We're going to put that guy in the action. So they're putting Zion out there with Herb Jones, 40% three-point shooter. Trey Murphy, excellent shooter. Yeah. You know what I mean? CJ McCollum, CJ. excellent shooter. So they're surrounding Zion with shooting. So now if you're surrounding him with shooting, now what you can't do is spy on him. Spy so now him. you're forcing an opposing big to guard Zion. Right. Interesting. I want to switch gears real quick, ADs. Uh, we had this conversation after you and Rick Hamlet did about the uh, you know best – uh, skilled backcourt of mm. all time. 
Kyrie and Luca. Where did you guys settle on that argument, that debate? Yes. Yes. Uh, mm. Yes. That's that's where we settled. Okay. <laughs> because here's the question that that I have with that. Sometimes it's okay, and we talked about this yesterday on the show. It's okay to say yes. Yeah. Period. Right. It's okay. Period. No. Instead of looking for <laughs> right. Some, With, yeah. Without a but. Right. If somebody said Steph Curry is the greatest shooter of all time, you know what I'm gonna say? Yes. Period. <laughs> Ain't no comma. Well, Ain't I remember no but. When Mark Jackson said that in what 2011. He, well, he said, said play, yep. and and a lot of us were like, hey. And then you had to think about it because that was a long time ago. It's like he was right then. Right. Uh, it was it was correct. So, and and it's, we don't like the we live in a culture now where people don't want. In today's NBA, for somebody to, to be the greatest of anything of all time, no matter what you're talking about, you can say the great. I, I go, I do a daily, I mean a weekly spot, national spot on ESPN, and I was going back and forth with one of their hosts about Steph Curry being the greatest shooter of all time. To me, I don't think that's debatable. Right. I'm sorry. I, I don't think so. I don't yeah. think that's debatable. And his whole thing was, oh my gosh, it's definitely debatable. I wouldn't even have him ever in my top shooter. What? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing good comes after but. I have realized that. So when somebody says, yeah, I hear you, but, okay, we can stop the conversation. Right. You know what so, happens, AD. <laughs> people say, you, you, somebody says something, first thing people do is look for some numbers that exactly. totally discounts or, you know, goes against what they're saying. This goes back to what we were referencing about Harrison Barnes. Yeah. We live in such a numbers-driven NBA right now. And it's not, it's not enough of the eye test for me. And if you can go and you can think of a backcourt, that is as skilled as those two guys across the board. I'll listen. The yeah. only I one listen. I could think of, and this is before all our times, and I'm not saying, oh, they were better, but the only one I could think of would be Earl Monroe and Walt Frazier. Okay, and that's what somebody yeah. said. Really? Somebody actually called in and said Earl Monroe and, and Walt Frazier. And here's the thing. I never saw those guys play right. like that, but when you think of and you take all things into consideration, the – Ultimate equalizer, or should I say what separates, is that three-point line. Yes, right. You know, that three-point line is it's, it's a – listen. It's an unknown for the older guys. We right. don't know. Right. It may be, but they didn't do it. They didn't right. have that. Like Pete Maravich. Right. Somebody said Pete Maravich and I forgot who his backward mate was. Pete Maravich and somebody Hudson, else. Hudson, maybe? Yes. Okay. Well, that's it. Okay. That's it. Pete Maravich and Lou Hudson. And here's the thing. I never saw sweet Lou Hudson play. I saw highlights of Pete Maravich. Without a three-point line. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that that kind of – and for me, I will say this, though. I am not a fan. If you have, you listen to our, our yep. Sirius XM show, I am not a fan of comparing and contrasting generations. I'm not a fan it of It just doesn't work. Yeah, because when everybody yeah. always says, who's your GOAT? I think Kareem was his GOAT for his era. Jordan was the GOAT for his era. And LeBron is the GOAT right. for this era. I don't think there's any way whatsoever to come up with one legitimate GOAT because I it's like too that. many variables. I like that. It's too many variables. You know, the, the defenses were different. You know, the game was played different. The game was slower. The game was faster. Illegal defense was completely, like, yeah. it's too much. It's too much to come up with a, a clear-cut answer. Right. Hmm. What would you say is the most important thing for the Kings to do tonight? We said they got to make shots. I know some of this is cliche. They got to make shots. They got to diversify the offense because they've been struggling when mm -hmm. the three-point shots not falling, and they got to rebound. From the perspective of someone who knows the Pelicans as well as anybody, what do you think is the most important thing for the Kings to do? Okay. I, I'll, when it's a team that you're struggling against and you have struggled with in the past, I think the start of the game is so incredibly important. Yeah. I think the first quarter is so incredibly important. The thing about the, the this team, if they don't shoot the three well, they're going to struggle because that's their identity. That's, that's who we're like they're, yeah. there's, That's unavoidable. If your identity is filling the blank and you struggle at filling in the blank, it's, especially with – Two of their guys, two of their key guys being out in Herder and also mm -hmm. Malik Monk. Yeah, yeah. For me, when you you feel like a team has gotten the best of you, I feel like the first quarter, you have to come out and punch first. Like it's it's deflating when a team has completely owned you and they come out and they punch you in the face off the jump. Next thing you know, you're down 15 points in the first, chasing the game. You got two TV guys tonight with nothing to do, right? But enjoy I the know, game, we get to chill right? tonight, right? Oh, yeah, I told you, all I got to do, all I got to do tonight <laughs> is go get my little boy his De'Aaron Fox jersey. That's all. I'm actually okay with not doing this one tonight. 
Are you you missing this one? I am. I'm missing. Are you really? <laughs> I am. I, I'm missing. <laughs> like big games like this. Yeah, I'm not yeah. Gonna lie. I feel you. I, I, I feel you. Man, if you want to sit me out a game, sit me out the Portland game that we just did. Right. Right. Yeah. Sit that's the that. game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sit me out the Portland right. game. I when you got a that. game of right. this magnitude right here, you I'll take this. You want to be in the, in yes. the thick of things? No, yes. I'm with. You. I'm with. Thank you very, very much. All right, for sure. Always. Always. I appreciate you guys. Glad you. What time y'all get in yesterday? Get get some good dinner last night. No, we got in the day before. Oh, so y'all been here that yeah, long? Yeah, well, so we came in, we played Portland, what day was that? What is today? Tuesday? Thursday? We yeah, played today. Portland on Tuesday, so yeah. we got on Tuesday night. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. All, All right, right, my guy. Grapes. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow? Yes. Yeah. Yes, tomorrow. We're right back here. Over under for HB tonight? Nah, I'm just kidding. 17 and a half. Right. My guy is going to deliver. He's going to step So what up. are you taking, over? Over. Yeah. yeah. Stick around. Game night is next.